Yes. Yes, here we are in in the basement. Yes. In in the multi-million dollar studio. Oh, that's what we're calling it. I now. meant to say multi-million dollar <laughs> studio. Uh, that can also be in a basement. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hey, it's Welcome us. To the Wolf Den podcast. We didn't forget. We didn't forget to no. be here. No, no, not it's at all. just uh, daughter really, really wanted to do the bedtime routine, and I was not allowed to leave. <laughs> uh, could you do that for me when, <laughs> for, before you leave? Uh, yes. <laughs> you you got a new couch? Yes, it's oh, nice. Well, it's I, very I wanna, comfy. I want to see this couch. Yes, I'll. Uh, this isn't in the family chat. I think there's uh, you. The there's mention of it, but you never actually show right, the couch. I will, show, I will show you the picture of the couch. It's a nice okay. couch. It's kind of a blue like that. Okay. It's actually the same couch mom and dad have in their Florida apartment. Oh, okay. Just it's a uh, smaller version and blue. I don't know that I've seen that couch. It's a very comfy couch. Um. All right. Well, anyway, hello, everybody. We hey, got a lot of things to talk about. We got to yep. talk about Game Awards. Yeah, Yay! that happened. Uh, we also have to talk about the indie world that happened today. Yep. Uh, not very interested. No, it's unfortunate. You know, didn't there was, look like anything too crazy going on in that indie. There was world. like wait, one or two things where I'm like, oh, that's cool, and then like that was it. I, I honestly haven't even looked at it. I I, I actually was caught to... the tail end of it. Yeah, and just saw the chat going L Nintendo and shit like that. <laughs> I mean, but they, they always do do that. They always do. That. Everybody well. says no Silk Song and no. Uh, there was one. Oh, Pizza Tower. Pizza Tower oh, was the big yeah. one people were disappointed about. Um. Otherwise, I'm excited to go through it and pick at least one game out that I'm interested yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, but but you know, skimming through it, I didn't seem to be too interested in much. Yeah. Also, Steam Deck OLED that happened. Yeah, that, that, that was, was like forever ago. But uh, that was uh that was, a week ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was not that long ago. Yeah. It was uh Thursday. Yes, it was, it Thursday. was Thursday. It was two days after you um said you might have something to do with the Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> it was. The instant we went live on the Nintendo podcast, okay, they announced the new yes, Steam Deck. Yes, yes, and they texted you and you didn't respond because you were live. Yeah, yes. it was like that instant. Yeah, um, and the pre-orders for that go up, uh, or the purchases for that, yes, go up on Thursday when the Nintendo podcast <laughs> happens. So, uh, I I did see their rules for it though already they already posted like you know you rules have, yeah you have to have a steam account in good standing you have to have okay. purchased something uh before november of this year uh you can only get one okay that like purchase something before november of this year like it really hurts a guy like me who doesn't use steam <laughs> like if i want a steam deck yeah like, that's I'm, kind of really annoying I, i'm boned i gotta buy a game <laughs> purchase some before november of this year yeah they should have given you a little more leeway there. yeah Especially when you announce it in November. Because you have a legitimate Steam I account. I have a legitimate Steam account with games. Yeah. Like, I have used Steam. Mm. But. Anyway, there's other stuff we got to talk yes. about. Like, Pokimane's uh, cookie company. Oh, that's a thing? Pokimane made a cookie company. Big controversy. Because the cookies are the exact same as cookies that you could buy at Costco. Oh. To be fair... Costco makes banger they cookies. They do make great cookies. So yeah. I don't really see what the problem and, is. And like you can't order the Costco cookies online to ship to your house. So if Pokimane will ship them to my and house, I will buy them from her. Supposedly they're cheaper. They're seven dollars instead of nine dollars for, for but you have to buy them in bulk. Okay. But I mean you're ordering online. Why wouldn't do I? Do they do? Because Costco now has the mini chocolate chip cookies that taste the same, but they're small. So Does these aren't actually Costco brand. Right. They're uh they're mini. They're like this big. Yeah. Um they're like dark chocolate. Okay. Uh they look good. All right. Might have to order a yeah, box and try them on the show. Taste test. Yeah. Then we could also go to Costco and get the Costco yes, and see. What I do have is. a membership. Yeah. Anyway. Uh thank you to Gamer Dad Coquie for gifting us up. Jeffrey Sorensen for the 30 months, Smash Block for the two months, and Mega Red with the three months. Hey, Wolves. Finally got to catch a stream while I'm off work dying from the flu, LOL. Well, that's good. Well, glad you're here. Yeah, it's... Uh... Under under any circumstances. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a wild time Glad there. your misfortune led you here. Be careful with the diseases. My boss got COVID recently. He was supposed to go to California, and he's stuck at home because he got COVID. You know, people are getting sick, man. Now's the time. Remember remember when we were all stuck indoors two years ago and everyone was mad? That seems Bring like a back. good idea. <laughs> Bring it back. Yeah. What you got to do is you got to drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. sleep a lot. Yeah. That's it. There you go. That's the secret. 
All right. You guys are going to talk about controversy going on with Gerard right now? No, but we could. We could. Do I you know about it, this? I do know about this. Okay. I was going to ask you about it before we went we could, live, but We I could talk about it. So, I, have, I didn't put it in the keep because I didn't know if we wanted to. Talk I have about no it. horse in this race, right. but I am uh, willing to. I'm, I'm willing to dive into it. Okay, because I do have some thoughts about it. All right, uh, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, should I? I'll find an article on it and put it in the keep. Or? Sure, right. might as well. Um, put it uh, under uh, the indie world. We'll do it after the indie world. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, let's just. We got a lot to talk about. Turns yeah, out, yeah. So apparently, let's, yeah. let's start with the with the with the game awards. Let's plow right through this. Yes. Of course, there's controversy with this too. Yes, there is. I mean, there's always controversy with the game awards, but I think one at least one of the con I don't know how many controversies there are this time, but at least one of them I feel like is a legitimate controversy. Okay. I'm gonna actually vote. I'm okay. gonna vote for the games right now. It, it just throwing me at game of the year. Yeah, they do that first. I guess get it out of the way. So, interesting game of the year this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Alan Wake 2, understandable. Yes. We got Baldur's Gate 3, understandable. understandable. Spider-Man 2, understandable for how the game awards usually is. Yes. I like. I just rolled credits on Spider-Man 2. It's a great game. I love the game. I'm probably going to do all the side missions on it mm -hmm. in terms of like game of the year i don't know i don't know if it's as revelatory as the first no, game was. it's 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 a it's a generic beat em up third person grand sony game we've seen know, a million of these i don't games know if before. generic's the right word i would say uh not generic, but like it's in the same mold as all the other ones, and it's it doesn't. Cookie cutter. It doesn't push it for. It's cookie cutter two is still like <laughs> too hard. No, because like it's still a great game, and it's still like a five out of five game and whatnot. I just don't know if it's game of the year worthy. I that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Like, yeah, I, I don't not like it. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just saying it's bleeding in with a lot of other yeah very especially because like alan games. wake 2 like pushes the medium forward in terms of like storytelling and narration Baldur's gate 3 is like really like pushes open world gameplay and like role-playing game Baldur's gate 3 is very interesting because uh it's just D D with with like <laughs> turn-based like you move yeah. the characters around but it's got this story and these dialogue trees and the millions of different so options much that you can, can happen. Do, like you can, you can pickpocket anybody. You can fuck anybody. <laughs> you can just do so much in the game. Yeah, it it it's very unique for the genre that it's in. Yeah. So that definitely deserves to be here. Um, Resident Evil Four, a little controversial. Yeah, because it is a remake. Yes. Uh, However, very good remake. It's a very good remake. It's an excellent remake. But I think that has more to say about the power of Resident Evil 4 yeah. as a whole than it does this particular version of the game. Mm -hmm. Again, great game. Fantastic game. Highly recommend it. This game only exists because of the original Resident Evil 4 that was so revelatory. Mm -hmm. And it only exists because of the Resident Evil 2 remake, which itself was revelatory. Right. So, But that wouldn't have existed without the original Resident right. Evil 4. But I would argue that the Resident Evil 2 remake is a bigger deal and more worthy of a Game of the Year nomination than this. Yeah. This. Okay. So, But this, this is a better game. You, do you think Resident Evil 2 is better than Resident Evil 4? I mean, technically, no, but by the same time... The problem is, when Resident Evil 4 originally came out, mm. there was nothing like it. You know, it not only changed the way Resident Evil games were, it changed the way third-person action games were. I I'm talking about the remakes. Do you think the Resident Evil 2 remake is better than the Resident Evil 4 remake? I think the Resident Evil 2 remake is more impactful than the Resident Evil 4 remake. Because it... Because it completely changed the way Resident Evil 2 is played, and it, like, is the... I would say the perfect blend of, like survival horror and action horror whereas this game came out like four years after the resident evil 2 remake had come out and it follows the same formula almost mm -hmm. like the original resident evil 4 changed the formula resident evil 4 remake sticks to formula if that makes sense okay again it sticks to formula perfectly does it incredibly well i don't know if it's 
game of the year worthy. I agree that Resident Evil 2, even though it's a remake, it deserves something because uh, it is different enough than the original Resident yeah. Evil. This does not really feel different enough from the original Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Although it's amazing. Yes. It's, it's one of my favorite games that I've played all year. Yeah, same here. I mean, yeah. I've only actually played two of these. I played Spider-Man and Resident Evil. Um, but I like, actually played, I think last year, I played a zero of the you game. You played like, most of these. I, yeah. I did. I, I played, uh, yeah, I played Spider-Man, Resident Evil yeah. 4. Spoiler alert. The next one is Super Mario Wonder. Yes. And then after that, it's Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. Super Mario Wonder... Uh, that's not a game that would typically be on this list at the Game Awards. Correct. Uh, I guess because it's a 2D Mario game. Uh, I guess that's why I think that. Well, yeah. I mean, or two... because it's 2D. Yeah. What was the last 2D game that was in? I honestly don't know. It's a 2D Mario game. So you think like, you know, not that they're all the same, but they again, they all, they were. Follow, <laughs> they all follow a very similar template. Right. But this one changes the template. Yeah. This one's very unique. Uh, I think it. Yeah. I think it does deserve a, uh, a spot in here, but I don't think it deserves Game of the Year. As right. much as I like it, it might have been yeah. my favorite game that I've played so far. I've, I might have had the most fun playing this game, but it uh, isn't. Uh, I don't think it deserves the Game of the Year. Right. I think Tears of the Kingdom deserves Game of the Year out of all of these games. Out of all of them. Out of all of them. Okay. Uh, just because of how much is packed into it and how uh, different it is than... The original even though it tried to follow the same sort of bones and right. added so much more to an already great game yeah um it accomplished a lot uh and i think that i think that that's that's the one that's the best game out of all of these games okay. even though i didn't like it as much as a lot of these <laughs> other games i just i think that it's just objectively the most well-designed game out of all okay of these. And, and 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 the most fun for like if i just had like a if somebody pulled me off the street and was like what game should i play yeah. that came out this year i would probably say tears of the kingdom got it okay i mean look all of these games are great games mm -hmm. it's not like in past years where, where it's like why nominate this why nominate this why nominate this like throw a rock and any of these could be game of the year but you know maybe some games need to deserve to be game of the year more than others uh i have not played Baldur's gate 3 though Right, and I feel like I might have thought otherwise if I had yeah. played Balls of Gate Three. I might have, I might actually vote for Balls. Have Gate you 3. played Alan Wake Two yet? No, okay. I have not played that either. I really want to play Alan Wake Two. That looks really good too. Yeah, that looks a lot like Resident Evil Four, though. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I mean, at least compare. I from my memory of the original Alan Wake, the original Alan Wake was very much into like how it told its story like through gameplay and through meta narrative and like doing weird things yeah like that, that stuff looks really and cool. as far as from what i can tell they're pushing that to its limit in this game in Alan wake 2 which i think is awesome mm -hmm. and i think more games should do that i'm voting for tears of the kingdom okay uh next category best game direction it's got a load a game direction. Okay, interesting. Awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. So we got Alan Wake 2, we got Baldur's Gate 3, we got Spider-Man 2, we got Mario Wonder, and we got Tears of the Kingdom. It's all the same games except Resident Evil 4. That's weird Yeah, that they just took one out. Yeah. It's uh, like, why didn't that game get Best Direction? Because it's a remake? Yeah, because they didn't do too much different. <laughs> but let's see, the thing is like, this raises the question. Mm -hmm. More and more video games are getting big budget, high profile remakes. Mm -hmm. Do those qualify for award season or particularly like the mage, like the game of the year award, the best direction award? I think if they're different enough. Yeah. They have to be substantially different. Like again, Resident Evil 2, I think is different. I think right. Resident Evil 4 is borderline. I think there's yeah. an argument for why it does not deserve to be nominated. It did add, like, it, to be clear, it did add a lot, but mm -hmm. it didn't add enough to differentiate it from the original Resident Evil right. 4. I agree. Uh, in terms of game direction, I think that all of these have fantastic game direction. Yeah. I would say Sp uh, Spider-Man, I think, is a little cookie cutter, and I don't think it, the game direction is that uh, impressive. Mm. I think that Tears of the Kingdom is yeah. impressive because of just the nature of it. I think that Super Mario Wonder is extremely impressive because that they had to 
take this formula that worked so well for, for, for 40 years, years and completely change everything about it. And yeah. it works so well. They changed it while keeping it familiar. Yeah. And a lot of what people love about this game is the game direction, is the shit where when you get a wonder flower and everything turns yeah. upside down and stuff. Like, that's the cool shit. And that's the game direction. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 is has phenomenal game direction because of the nature of that because it's a it's a turn-based genre that you could do anything in it yeah. and that's a huge undertaking um and then alan wake 2 is the same thing it's a completely yeah. different like what you said before there's like these weird storytelling things uh that no other game has yeah um where it jumps back from like uh live action to 3d and and, and stuff uh so all of these i think are good contenders Except Spider Man, fuck Spider Man. <laughs> um, I can't give it Alan Awake too because I don't know much about it. Right. So I, I haven't played much of it. Uh, I really want to give it a Super Mario Wonder, but I also kind of want to give it a Baldur's Gate three, even though I haven't played it. Right. I, I need a tiebreaker. Somebody, somebody's got a tiebreak for me. Who's gonna Who's gonna tiebreak? Who's gonna be the brave one to tiebreak? What uh, system is Baldur's Gate three on? Um, it's on PC. PC. I, I think it's on PS five now, and I think they're working. They're still working on getting it on Xbox. Yeah, which is insane that yeah. it's as popular as it is, and it's just a PC game. Yeah. Uh, Edward Bova says Super Mario Wonder. Well, I'm not gonna take just the first guy. What about you? Why don't you <laughs> oh, tell me? me? Okay. Why don't you tell me which one? All right, what, you were between Wonder and Tears of the Kingdom. No, Wonder and Baldur's Gate. Wonder and Baldur's Gate. I do think Tears of the Kingdom has great game direction, but uh. I would say Baldur's Gate. Boom. Done. Because Mario would have been good regardless. It's Mario. I think the direction of Baldur's Gate was able to push it beyond, you know, the typical D&D crowd into like a more mainstream conversation. Yeah. And again, there's it's just such a unique style of game. Yeah. Uh, also, I completely forgot Baldur's Gate 3 runs on Mac. Yes. Played on Mac. Yes. Uh, so another nod to your game direction. Yes. Uh, what are we now? Uh, best narrative. We got Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, Final Fantasy 16, and Spider-Man 2. Now, I know you've been crapping on Spider-Man 2 a lot. <laughs> I was going to skip this category, to be honest really? with you. Really? Because uh, I haven't. I only played Spider-Man 2. Right. And I can't imagine half of these games having a good narrative <laughs> well i'm gonna i'm gonna jump to spider-man 2's defense real quick okay. because is it i mean it's a very great narrative it, I, it tells, i'm like three hours into it not seeing that yet <laughs> you gotta stick with it especially okay. the side quests. the side quests are some of the best stories in an open world game okay but by the time i was done with uh, just by the time i roll credits actually before that i came to the realization that this one game does better two of the stories from two of the most maligned Spider-Man films. Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3. Mm. It tells the Venom story from Spider-Man 3 and the Harry Osborn story from Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 better than both of those movies by basically combining them into one story. But is that saying much? Those were bad movies. <laughs> I think it's saying something that because open world games, like it's very easy for the narrative to get lost and very easy for everything to be like scattershot. I think of uh, to say that they were able to find the focus and the through line and tell a great story that Hollywood couldn't do is saying something. Hmm. It's not perfect. The, they made a big deal about like it being, you know, Peter and miles and the story is very heavily Peter sided. Mm. especially towards the middle but i think the story they tell is very good and they do set it up you know for the next one at the end um so that's my defense of the spider-man 2 story i'm gonna say i saw clips from final fantasy 16 and that can't possibly be <laughs> a good narrative uh cyberpunk 2077 phantom liberty i'm sure it's fine i've, I've heard it's very good and I've I've heard that the story is very good, and that you know, again, like Cyberpunk, that game fucking turned itself around. I'll give it props yeah. for that. Uh, 
if I had to guess, I would imagine Alan Wake 2 or Baldur's Gate 3 would have the best narrative out yeah. of all of these games. I mean, Remedy, Alan Wake 2, that's like their thing. Yeah, Remedy puts like all of their eggs in the story basket all the time. And Baldur's Gate 3 is unique because you make the narrative. Yeah. You're making it as you're, as you're going yeah. along, and people seem to really like that. So uh, I think I want to skip. I'm skipping it. Okay. I'm skipping it's this fine. one. Um, best art direction. Alan Wake 2. Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and Tears of the Kingdom. What a weird, what a weird collection. Well, I mean, it's the it runs the gamut of like all the different types of games there are. You got the gritty, realistic one. You Why got is the... Lies of P for best art direction? It's not uh, like it's not that revolutionary. The art direction of Lies of P. I think the game's probably really good. It looks really yeah. good, but. There really wasn't anything better for art direction. I mean, probably because it's got like the fancy gothic castles in the back, and somebody. Oh, uh, we've uh, never seen that before. Well, somebody at the Game Awards really loves gothic castles. <laughs> um, Alan Wake Two's got some cool shit going on. Mario Wonder is beautiful. It's yeah, gorgeous, but I and would, Hi-Fi Rush. I, is I, that was, I would say like Hi-Fi Rush because. Out of all all these games, Hi-Fi Rush is the most unique looking. This category disappoints me because I know there's better art direction. Pizza Tower. Yeah. Was that last year? Was it? I don't remember. Let me see. Pizza Tower. Uh, uh <laughs> 2023, January. See, I got Leaning Tower of Pete of Pizza in East Meadow. <laughs> <laughs> does it is say permanently closed it does say permanently mm, closed nice very nice uh, um pizza tower looks amazing yeah um art direction should have a couple of indie games sprinkled in there yeah like, like, their indie games have incredible art direction yes. especially compared to uh a lot of the more popular triple a stuff that is kind of samey uh-huh. like Liza P and right. I was just I was just praising Alan Wake 2 but I mean it's you know it's 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 like a lot it's almost live action right <laughs> well some of it is live action yeah so like so that's why I would say like it's disappointing that like a lot of the most unique games this year are not yeah in the best start direction category but uh, having said that I would say hi I would still say hi-fi rush is the most unique looking of these games yeah, but think about what they had to do to Super Mario Wonder. Okay, they had to make him an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big undertaking, yeah. making Mario such an iconic character an into elephant. an elephant. And it's, then all eight of the other characters had to like make him into an elephant. It's not like they just put him in an elephant costume. He becomes an elephant. Yes, and so does Daisy and so right. does Peach. I never forget won't. about that. Deviant yeah. will never forget about no, that. No, no, they won't. I'm, I'm voting for Mario Wonder. Okay, fine. <laughs> um... Now we're on best score and music. This is Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, yeah. Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Hi-Fi Rush, and Tears of the Kingdom. I'm sure they all have amazing uh, music. Yeah. I know Tears of the Kingdom has really good music. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush, it's the crux of the whole game. Yeah. And the music is fucking amazing. So I'm going with Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah. Um, Best audio design. Dead Space? Alan Wake 2, Dead Space, Hi-Fi Rush, Spider-Man 2, uh, Resident Evil 4. So, Two remakes. Two remakes, three horror games. Interesting. It's weird that Dead Space is here. Well, I guess they, that no, has... No, Dead Space has always had great yeah. audio design. A lot of games have great audio design that you don't really think about. Yeah. Like uh, the Call of Duties usually do. Yeah. Um, I was playing Rainbow Six the other day just like for the original? Funsies. No, the Siege. Okay. Just for funsies. Yeah. And I went to the shooting range and it's... I've been playing a lot of first-person shooters and it feels like you're in a real shooting range. Oh, with, wow. with like the way that the uh, bullet sounds reverberate uh -huh. off of the walls in like a way that only happens in a shooting range. It's uh -huh. fucking cool. But anyway... um. I wish I knew about this category before I voted for the last one because <laughs> audio design definitely goes to Hi-Fi Rush because they designed the whole game off of the can, audio. Look, you can vote for both. It can be good enough for both. I'm doing it. I played a lot of games this year. I played a lot more games than I thought nice. I did. Look at you. Best performance. Now this I can't. 
I, I awarded for an individual this. voice acting or motion capture or, or both. Uh, ben Starr, Final Fantasy 16, Cameron Monaghan, Jedi Survivor, Idris Elba, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Melanie LeBird, Alan Wake 2, uh, Neil Newborn, Baldur's Gate 3, and Yuri Lowenthal, Spider-Man 2. I only played Spider-Man. I think I, I think I want to skip this one. Okay. I uh, mean, Yuri Lowenthal. Yuri Lowenthal does a great performance. He's a fantastic Spider-Man. His symbiote Spider-Man leans a little bit too much. Do you remember the the clip from the 94 animated series when Spider-Man has the symbiote suit and he's yelling at Shocker? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it goes it goes there okay. sometimes. So. I like that though. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, so. I don't, I didn't play Jedi Survivor. I only played the the one before. I'm that. sure it's the same. <laughs> I'm sure it's the same. I'm I'm skipping this okay, one. I don't want I don't want any part of that. Um, innovation in accessibility. Recognizing software or hardware that pushes the media forward for adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed on a uh, by a wider audience. Diablo Four, Forza Motorsport, Hi-Fi Rush, Spider Man Two, Mortal Kombat One, and Street Fighter Six. I haven't played Forza yet. I haven't played oh, no? Forza. I gotta, I gotta do that. Yeah. Um, I have a weird take on this. Okay. Hi-Fi Rush has a feature in the very beginning of the game that shows you your um, input and audio latency and really? calibrates it for you. And that is being used to test latency on devices now. Like 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 other YouTubers and stuff are using it mm -hmm. to do that. So does that count as innovation in accessibility? I think it more means like you know the ability for like people who tr who have trouble playing games traditionally, like giving them access to play the game and enjoy the game. Prop like so that they can just have fun. This with is it. giving me access to calibrate all of my tools to enjoy all of my games. Well, I mean like so Street Fighter Six I know has the mo the modern control scheme where it makes it easier to pull off combos and special moves rather than inputting complex button combinations. Mm -hmm. That is a step forward in accessibility. Spider-Man 2 has an easy mode where like you can get beat up but you won't die in the middle of a fight so you can keep you can keep progressing in the story. There's still a sense of challenge but like you're not going to just automatically fail everything. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what they mean by like accessibility. So like this is easy when there's like a Naughty Dog game or something because they yeah. have like crazy accessibility options. Yeah. I don't know any of the accessibility options in any of these games. Right. I would, I mean, just based on the modern control scheme of Street Fighter 6 alone, I would give it to that because the fighting game scene is notorious for, you know, complex button inputs and like combos and things like that and here comes street fighter you know the granddaddy of fighting games to be like hey let's make let's let everybody play this i don't know how much it changes things though because i actually played that and right. it is one but it's like a special move button or something yeah um like you still obviously have to be good the to problem play. is you still have all of the other buttons on the controller yeah. and it's still pretty complicated yeah <laughs> so i don't know how much that changes things is this so this is easy mode awards or accessibility awards they could be the same it's, it can be yeah they can sometimes be one and the same software or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience um short street fighter why not okay Uh, games for impact. Still don't really know what this category no. is. For no. a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Wasn't a space there... for the unbound. Chance for a sonar. Goodbye Volcano High. Uh, Ticha, Terra Nil, and Venba. Wasn't there a controversy last year over this? Like, wasn't there a game? I think there was a game that just... There was, like, no reason it yeah. should have been here or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I've I've heard Pro of Venba. social message. It's like I heard it's an hour and a half. Really? Yeah. No. Oh. So there you go. That's that's like the immigrant family like adapting through cooking or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. So I heard a chance of Senar. I'm very interested in that game. Mm -hmm. It's uh. uh 
it's a sort of journey like puzzle game okay where you come across this village and you talk to all the people in the village and you don't speak their language oh and like little symbols come up yeah. and you have to try to figure out their language basically. got it yes and there are mods for this game so it'd be really cool mm -hmm. to mod it to be an actual foreign language yes. so that you can actually learn the foreign language um i'm Otherwise, I have no interest in any of these games. Chance of Sinar, I don't know what social impact yeah. it has other than you're learning about a fictitious yeah. village. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the social impact of any of these games, except maybe Venba, yeah. because that's like front and center. I'm skipping this. Okay. Best um, ongoing. Now, this is one with some controversy. Awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content and that evolves the that evolves the player experience over time. Apex Legends, Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. So this has controversies because Cyberpunk 2077, mm -hmm. people think that that shouldn't be an ongoing game. I think it definitely is an ongoing game. It became an ongoing game through circumstances. Yeah, it shouldn't have been it should an not ongoing have been, game. But it became one. Yeah, it yeah. should have been right the first time, but right. they just had to make slow changes over time. And I guess yeah. adding uh, Phantom Liberty well, makes it ongoing, but so, that seems to be a completely new game. No, that's just that's just DLC. But they're like so, counting it as a new. Well, they're, no, they're, it's they're up saying, for some awards. They're not saying Phantom Liberty. They're saying Cyberpunk 2077, right. the game itself. Yeah, so the this is, is separate than than Phantom, Phantom Liberty. Liberty now. Yes, the game itself did change and evolve and like grow yeah. into something completely different from what it was when it launched in 2020. Mm. So yeah, it is it there was an ongoing development on the game after it came out. That that's what this category is. I think just because when we think of ongoing game, we typically think of all these other games which are online games, yeah. Apex and Fortnite and, and those are also constantly changing and yes. evolving because they have to because they're they well games yeah, they have service. to because they're supposed to be like forever games yeah. cyberpunk is not necessarily a forever game you play it until you beat it but they kept changing it over the course of the past three years and i honestly think all of these deserve it i think all of these yeah. are, are good options um apex has probably been nominated a million times but that's changed a lot fortnite's uh, always nominated final fantasy fortnite 16, had a huge 14, year this year yeah uh at, at least recently yeah um genshin impact i don't know what has changed about that <laughs> but i know people still like it and still play yeah. it final fantasy 14 i know has also had a lot of developments uh yeah. that the community really likes and i think cyberpunk's a big deal yeah that, about how much they changed people seem to really like it now yeah people love it now i kind of want to vote for cyberpunk vote for cyberpunk <laughs> um it best, takes a long time to best community support recognizing a game for outstanding community support transparency and responsiveness uh inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches Baldur's gate 3 cyberpunk 2077 destiny 2 final fantasy 14 and no man's sky i saw some interesting discourse online about this because yeah. uh a lot of these companies fired their community people yes so. i saw someone say who's going to accept the award for destiny 2 yeah because they got rid of the community team. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know who gets best community support. I haven't seen a lot from any of these. I mean, No Man's Sky had a lot of updates recently. Yeah. Final Fantasy fourteen also, maybe. Uh, I know Destiny used to have some crazy community support. I don't know how much they have now. Uh, probably none. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3, I think, had had a lot of updates post-launch. Yeah. But I don't know if they have, like, a community team. Yeah, I would say the same thing about Cyberpunk. I don't know, like, how much they, like, were interacting with the community so yeah. much. The chat's saying Baldur's Gate 3. All no right. Man's Sky, I think if they they should have gotten it if they like had two it years ago, yeah. you know? Yeah, so... Baldur's Gate, don't do it. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate had several great patches, but that felt more like catching up on stuff that was meant to be in launch. Right. Yeah, again, like, community support to me feels like uh, social stuff, like community manager, like, dealing with, like, uh, like, like, people who play the game and, yeah. and, and stuff like that having events and shit mm -hmm. 
Best independent game for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. That's an interesting yes. uh, way to put that. Uh, Cocoon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Sea of Stars, and Viewfinder. So the controversy here is that Dave the Diver uh, was funded by a big corporation. Yes. Uh, Nexon. Nexon, a South Korean video game uh, company worth... Mm billions of dollars so that actually got community noted when, on twitter when <laughs> when the game awards tweeted this category yeah uh, the the tweet got a community note saying dave the diver is not an indie game yeah <laughs> um i think that we're getting in the weeds here when we try to define what an indie game is especially these days um we know the genre of indie game is one thing right but trying to define what an indie game is based on like the funds and the team size is something different well i think that's what it's supposed to mean mm -hmm. the funds and the team size because you're independent of the big system you're independent of the AAA system yeah but here's and those my... teams are usually smaller budget and like don't have a lot of people on it right my issue when you're talking about just funding like uh -huh. i think team size is a, is a good uh uh the it, it's a good definition right but when you're talking about funding which is why people are upset about dave the diver if you're talking about funding a game like sea of stars might not deserve to be an indie game because the messenger their previous game did really good right so like same thing with like shovel knight shovel knight's definitely an indie game but because that made millions upon millions of dollars does that mean their next game is not an indie game anymore all of a sudden that's why I think the team size definition is a much better definition. I would... Because, all right. So, to me, independent means not necessarily budget, uh, but it's just that it exists outside the the major system, like outside yeah. of the AAA system. Right. Um. So, like, Sea of Stars, regardless of what their funding was due to the success of The Messenger, they're still independent because they're not you know, involved with EA or Activision or Microsoft or Sony or any of that. Right. Dave the Diver also exists outside of that system. Mm -hmm. But the company that funded the and published it is big enough to be a triple A game company. My issue is that at some point, these games are going to make enough money where they're it, they're going to come toe to toe with like some big AAA games. Like some of these indie games are selling as much as some AAA games, you right? Know? So like uh, de defining it by just the money is is a bit of an issue. Do you remember the game Unraveled? Yeah, that was an EA game. Yeah, but. If you take EA's logo off of it, you could assume that's an indie game. I, Would I, that I have been eligible for this category? I think of Child of Light because that was that's a Ubisoft, Ubisoft game. game. Yes, yeah, that's another good example. And that was nominated, uh, I think, because it was a s small team at Ubisoft Montreal. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't have yeah. the answer, but... Um, Again, I think that it's it's more about the team size. I think you're right that if it's outside of the traditional publisher scope, but then you have like publishers like Devolver Digital, which is like a huge publisher. They do indie games, right? They but focus they're on, huge, right? But they focus on games outside the traditional system. Yeah, but they are they have become the traditional system. They're fighting the same fight that all the other publishers do. Yeah. Although they have some unconventional ways of promoting right. their games, but yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Is like eventually they're going to become the system, and there's no stopping that. People in the chat, uh, I think, brought up uh, Hollow Knight. Like Silk Song's gonna be an indie game, but yeah, Hollow Knight sold so much, mm -hmm. and we don't want to, you know. To take away their indie status just because they they're successful, right? I'm trying to see, I'm trying to find like a good comparison. Cocoon is is I, by Annapurna. Well, they're a movie studio. They're an indie movie studio. 
I thought, and they Co- also do indie games. I thought Cocoon was by the same people who did a um, Journey. Uh, have you seen Viewfinder? Viewfinder is cool. The game? The game, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that looks really yeah. cool. That looks really cool. I think that's the one I want to play the most out of all of these. <laughs> I do want to play Dave the Diver. Cocoon is by the Inside Slash Limbo devs. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not voting. I didn't play any of these games, right. and I, I don't feel comfortable voting. I would have loved to have played Sea of Stars uh, because I loved The Messenger, but yeah. it's such a different type of game than The Messenger. Yeah. Next is best debut indie oh. game. Cocoon, Dredge, Pizza, Pizza Tower, Tower Venbon, and Viewfinder. Don Pizza Tower. <laughs> Pizza Tower sick. Oh, yeah. I got to look at the other stuff. I didn't even look. I heard Dredge was good. I've heard Dredge was good. Again, Viewfinder. Not Pizza Tower slaps. Yeah. We're sticking with that. Uh, best mobile game. Final Fantasy VII uh, Ever Crisis. Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Okay. Uh, Honkai Star Rail. Monster Hunter Now. And Terra Nil. I have not heard of Monster Hunter Now. I didn't know that was a thing. I, I only know of Hello Kitty Island Adventure because all the articles talking about it when it came out brought up the fact that it was referenced in the South Park World of Warcraft episode like 15 years ago really yeah because like butters doesn't play world of warcraft he played hello kitty island adventure it was supposed to be a joke <laughs> show how lame butters is but sudden blink entertainment over here is like let's make that a game oh my god uh and terra nil what is that that's the second time it's come up i gotta look up what terra nil okay. is you do that uh strategy game Okay, not interested. <laughs> um, I'm not voting. I didn't play any okay. of the games. Best VR AR game. Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Call of the Mountain, Humanity, Resident Evil Village, and Synapse. I take issue with Humanity being a VR game because maybe I played the wrong version. Okay. But I played a demo on PSVR because they have been promoting this as a VR game. And it's just a... It's just a screen. Okay. You're not in the world. It's just it's just a flat 16 by 9 screen that you're looking at. Okay. Maybe I'm playing the wrong version, but How many different versions of humanity could there be? There's got to be a VR version. Okay. I played the demo and it was flat. I was a flat video that I was right. looking at. Um and Horizon Call of the Mountain was bad. That was <laughs> not good. Um, I'm sure Gran Turismo is great because I yeah. played the previous one in VR uh, and it was awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about Synapse and I hear Resident Evil Village is great. Yes. So. I've heard the Resident Evil VR modes are really good. I'm just too much of a chicken to play them. I'm skipping because I okay. have nothing good to say about this category. Okay. Best action game. Armored Core 6, Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant 2. I forgot about Dead Island 2. Yeah. It came out and like people liked it when it came out. It got good reviews. I played Armored Core. Uh-huh. Very good. Uh I have Ghost Runner 2 on my Steam Deck. I have the demo for it. I haven't played it yet. Uh Hi Fi Rush, very good. Yes. And I wanna play Remnant 2. I, mm. I, I thought that looked really good. I think I kind of missed the boat on it though. I don't know if I'm gonna play it. Right. Um Action Game. This is so action game. Isn't there also an action adventure? Yes. Category? Okay, that's I was what say, it is. That might be the next. That's going to be different for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Th- I don't know if Armored Core is good enough to get uh, best action game. I'm inclined to give it a high fire. Okay. I-, I would. L- I I have to play Ghost Runner too, but I don't think it's going to match High Fire Rush. Probably not. I'm going to give it a yeah. high fire rush. All right. Um. Best action, action adventure. adventure game. Now, best action game is for the best game in the action genre focused primarily on combat. Action adventure is for the best action slash adventure game combining combat with traversal, traversal and puzzle solving. Okay, I understand. Uh, that's Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> that the yes, yeah, it does that the best. Okay. Out of any of these games, for sure. There's no way around that. Okay. Um, Spider-Man's got the traversal 
Yes. But you know what? So does Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, you can web sling in Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> no, you build a fucking bird and jump True, on it yeah. and then parachute off of it and shit. It's got it's got similar traversal in that it's a ma a major part of the game and it forces you to do the work. Right. Um so yeah. I think Resident Evil 4 also does a good job with puzzle solving and combat. Yes. But uh Tears of the Kingdom has it all roped into one thing. It's all right. combined into one beautiful amalgamation. Mm -hmm. So that's the one. All right. Next is best RPG. Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. We forgot to bring up that controversy. Oh, yeah. Starfield is not a game of the year. Starfield contender. is not a game of the year. Hi-Fi Rush was not game of the year. Um, I saw the xbox tax trending on twitter which apparently means that like xbox doesn't get nominated for anything true that's a good point it's, it's possible that starfield didn't get nominated because of they the just xbox don't like tax. xbox <laughs> could it also be because xbox is only just now starting to put out like exclusives for their system true after like a 10-year drought and that the ones they've been putting out have been you know okay at best so out of all of these, I've only played Starfield. Okay. I have to say, I agree that Starfield does not deserve Game of the Year. It is uh I enjoyed it, but yeah. it's not great. Like right. it's it's no, it's it's not okay. Yeah, Bethesda is in the past. They need right. to step things up a little bit. Uh this best RPG is probably Baldur's Gate 3. Probably. That yeah. is just by definition, an RPG and ex like expands the genre so yeah. much. It takes it so much further. Starfield is an RPG from fucking ten years ago yeah. that hasn't changed. So, um, best fighting game, uh, God of Rock, Mortal Kombat I've One, never heard of that. Uh, Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl Two, Pocket Bravery, and Street Fighter Six. I've heard Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl Two is good. And I don't believe a word any of those it's, people are saying. It's it the one looks the first, like garbage. It's the one the first game should be. No, it has voice acting at launch now. Mm, right. right. I did hear about that. <laughs> it looks bad. Like It's just Smash Brothers. Right. So why wouldn't I play that? It's better. Because you can't play as SpongeBob in Smash Brothers. I want to play as Ren and Stimpy. Mm, so I understand yeah. the appeal. But if it's a Smash Brothers clone but feels significantly worse, I'd rather just play Smash yeah, Brothers. Yeah, like... If you're gonna be a clone of Smash Brothers, you have to be exceptional. Yeah, and because Smash Brothers is exceptional. Yeah, it is. It is the most well-designed fighting game on the planet. Is there anything that any like platform fighter that comes like not even close? Like if if Smash Brothers is like the valedictorian of the graduating class, is there an A plus uh, student? No, is there a <laughs> solid B student? <laughs> Probably Brawlhalla or that other one. Multiverses Cla clash or? of uh what's that other one it's brawlhalla and there's one other one. oh rivals of aether okay people like those i think rivals of aether people like that one okay. for, for the mechanics but to be honest it's so the Smash Golf Brothers is so, is so yeah. far beyond that yeah and a lot of it is because of how much effort was put into it and how big of a budget it is and stuff yeah and there's no there's just no competing against that you can't just be like you know, hey guys, make a Smash Brothers clone it and put Nickelodeon characters yeah. in it. It's just never gonna happen. Um, that being said, uh, Street Fighter Six is amazing. Right. I didn't play Mortal Kombat One. Did you? I play do. It? Want, I really want to play Mortal Kombat One. I have not played Mortal okay. Kombat One. I'm gonna give it a Street Fighter Six. Okay. I think that is a great uh, fighting game. Uh, best family game. Uh, Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars, and Mario Wonder. So we can't give it a Party Animals because that's just Gang Beast. Right. Um, Pikmin 4, is that a family game? I guess. I don't know. What is family game? For the best game appropriate for fa pl family play, irrespective of genre or platform. Right. For family play. Disney Illusion Island is a pretty good contender honestly yeah it's like a beginner's guide to metroidvania style games sonic superstars i beat it the other day yeah uh infuriating <laughs> absolutely horrible yeah. although 
when you beat the game, you unlock a character, and she is crazy. It's it's kind of awesome the 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 uh, it's the, you you get to play the game again as that character, and and her mechanics are like wacky. Who do you unlock? It's like a I think she's from this game. Uh, I oh, forgot her name. It's a, it's an O it's an OC. Yeah, no, it, it literally is an oh, OC. Uh, I'm gonna spoil it. Go for so, it. So when you double jump, uh-huh. you turn into like this circle that has like uh like spikes. Yeah. And you so you jump and then you jump again, you get an extra jump, and then you lock and you can snap to a wall and roll up and down it. Oh, that's cool. And then you get to keep all of the chaos emeralds from okay. before. So when you turn into supersonic as this girl, mm-hmm. you turn into this big dragon thing <laughs> and you just fly. You just you're just you're flying. It okay. turns into a side scrolling flying thing. It's fucking amazing. And it's a furry. Like you turn into of course, a furry. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't remember her name, but uh it's kind of it's kind of sick. I'm not yeah. playing the whole game again, but but she's but she's cool. Uh, anyway, this is Super Mario Wonder. <laughs> We're giving this a Super Mario Wonder. Okay. Because uh, that's the best game out of all of yeah. these. And uh, if you're going to play with the family, that's the one to do. Her name is Trip. Thank you very much. Okay. Best sim slash strategy game. Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. City Skylines 2. Company of Heroes 3. Fire Emblem Engage. And Pikmin 4. Forgot about Fire Emblem Engage. Yeah, that uh, I think reviewed the the worst out of any Nintendo first party. That wasn't okay. Second worst, the worst was everybody wants to switch. Everybody wants yeah. to switch. Um, that said though, Nintendo best represented game in the <laughs> Sim strategy genre. Weird. I would not yeah. be expecting that. Do you think Pikmin Four or Advance Wars? Well, again, Advance Wars is a remake. Are we dying on the hill about of remakes here? No, but I'm going. I'm throwing it back to your question. Does it is it substantially different from the original game to warrant? No, it being game of the year. No, you don't think so? No. Okay. All right, Pikmin. <laughs> I'm voting. For, I can't <laughs> believe I voted for Pikmin. There you go. You heard it here first. Bob's a Pikmin boy now. Uh, best sports slash racing game. EA Sports FC twenty four. F1 23, Forza Motorsport, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged, yeah, baby. and the Crew Mortifest. I'm skipping. As okay. much as I want to give it a Hot Wheels. Yeah. Best multiplayer, Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo f- 4. Yeah. Uh, I can't do Roman numerals. Party Animals, Street Party Animals. <laughs> That's the, the, all we got for multiplayer. Street Fighter 6 and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Weird. I mean, it runs the gamut. You got cooperative games, you got competitive games, you got platformers, you got fighters, you got two rpgs this is the best multiplayer is there gonna be an online category an online multiplayer category oh, there's gotta be an online uh i gotta say super mario bros wonder one of my favorite things about it is that you have a, you have like the dark souls kind of thing where like you see other players that are playing yeah. the same level as you and i think that's kind of really cool okay um but no Baldur's gate 3 has the best multiplayer out of any of these games okay best adaptation uh castlevania nocturne uh Gran Turismo oh, yeah Gran Turismo The Last of Us the Super Mario Brothers movie and Twisted Metal so this was controversial because uh people are wondering why Twisted Metal's here people like Twisted Metal like I have friends who like you know don't follow this stuff closely and they watch Twisted Metal like you know what it's not bad okay it's okay um you know not you know, Emmy Award winning or anything, but, you know, a fun-ish time. I heard Gran Turismo was not bad. I've heard it was awful. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, Super Mario Bros. movie was great. No, it wasn't. Uh, uh, I've heard the Castlevania animes on Netflix are really good. Mm-hmm. Like, genuinely very good. I have not seen a single one, but I did see the trailer for that same studio's doing Devil May Cry, and that looks very good. I'm going to vote for The Last of Us. Okay. The Last of Us was very good. Although I didn't finish it. <laughs> I got to the left behind story and I just stopped watching. I heard that when Ellie is about to have the surgery to save the world, Jill snaps and kidnaps her. Whoa. Whoa. Did I just spoil the story for you? I mean, that's the, that's the story. I was somebody I work with was like talking to me about the last of us. And he's like, do you care if I spoil the show for you? I'm like, go for it. And he said, I'm like, that's exactly what happens in the game. So, 
I remember when uh, Star Wars Episode Three came out. Yeah, I was talking about. Uh, I was talking about it, mm-hmm. and uh, our friend. I was talking to our friend Chris. And, yes. and uh, I said something along the lines of, yeah, when Anakin turns to Darth Vader, he goes, why'd you spoil it for me? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> the movie's that, yeah. <laughs> been out for fucking 20 years or uh, whatever at the time. Anyway. Uh, most anticipated game. You got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades 2, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. Hades 2. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would say so. Done. Uh, I'm excited for Star Wars Outlaws, but it's a Ubisoft game and that has all the potential to be but. I agree. I yeah. am probably most excited for that, but I think yeah. uh, more people are excited for Hades too. Yeah. Content creator of the year. You got Iron Mouse. You got people make games? Yes. Who's that? You got Quackity. You got, oh, that's the person who got screwed by Mr. Beast. Oh. I think he was supposed to win like some tournament. Spreen, remember Spreen? <laughs> I've never heard of him. And C- Cipher PK. Wait, I think people make games like they do. Yes, they do the documentaries. What They're else? like, uh, they did the Valve documentary. I like Iron Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Valve documentary. Yeah, working at Valve. Oh, done. Yeah, they get it. <laughs> people no, make games, gets it. No clip is who I wanted to compare them to. Right, I, yeah. I understand. They 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 did good work with the yes. Valve thing. Uh, best esports game. We got Counter Strike Two. We got Dota Two. We got League of Legends. We got PUBG Mobile, and we got Valorant. Mm, you're a Valorant. I man. love Valorant. Uh, I do like what Counter. Why the fuck isn't Counter Strike <laughs> Two for multiplayer? Because it's an esport game. Well, it should That's... be for best multiplayer. <sighs> I mean, Is there really no online multiplayer category? Theoretically, any of these should be best multiplayer. Because well, they're none all of them multiplayer came. games. Yeah, but only Counter-Strike 2 came out this year. Right. Uh, I'm voting Valorant. Because none of these other, these other games have fell off with the esports. Best esports athlete. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to know. We got I, Faker. I've heard of him. Faker. Zewu, Demon One. Uh, Hydra. Ruler. And Imperi how I only know Faker. I'm skipping this. All right. Uh, best uh, esports team: Evil Genius, Fnatic, uh, Gaming Gladiators, JD Gaming, and Team Vitality. Skip. Okay. You got two Valorant teams in there. Best esports coach. I'm just skipping. <laughs> uh, best esports event: League uh, of Legends, uh, Blast TV, Evo. Dota championships, Valorant championships. I want to vote for Evo, but right. I don't know enough about any of these. Right. I uh, think I might have watched the Valorant championships. And we are at the end. Oh. That's it, it says at the top right, 20 out of 31, because I skipped a lot. Okay. I'm, I'm just skipping the rest, I guess. Uh, that's so I, I'm uh, disappointed <laughs> about the multiplayer category. I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Th- that was the best we had? 2023 multiplayer games. None of them were like online multiplayer games. And how could you not have Counter-Strike 2 in, well, in I mean, there? Baldur's Gate and Diablo, I think you can only play those mo- online. Right. But No, Baldur's Gate does have... Uh, it has local? Yeah, it has local. Interesting. Um, oh, that's right. That's the, the whole reason. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, that's... Counter-Strike so, 2 got... got snubbed that's saying something because how many years have we heard you know people saying oh local multiplayer is dead it's all about online we're taking out local multiplayer and it's only gonna be online multiplayer and the game awards comes out and says that the best multiplayer games all have a dedicated <laughs> local <laughs> mode yeah so weird. we won in the long run people that's I, I, I think that maybe the Game Awards is making a statement that my, uh, uh, Counter Strike Two is not that good. <laughs> um, that's well, what clearly I, you know, they're making a statement that Xbox games are not that good. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm looking Conspiracy. at 2023 multiplayer games, and I gotta say, there really wasn't that much this year. Yeah. Oh, Naraka Blade Point. No, that wasn't this year. That was last year. Get the fuck out of here. This article doesn't know anything. Um, okay, so that's that's the. 
uh, game awards, you can vote yourself. If you yes. didn't like any of the stuff that we voted for here, go vote yourself. It's open. I think uh, our votes only count for like what ten percent, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, like like it's it's a committee of people, and then we are our popular vote is like part of the committee. Basically, yeah. we're like a tiebreaker. I think uh, according to the chat, our votes actually don't count until you do all thirty one categories. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's kind of fucked, because then it forces you to make choices that you are not cap capable yeah. of doing. Uh, can I can I pass? <sighs> All right, we got a lot more to go through here. Yeah, uh, let's talk about the Steam Deck. Oh okay. wait, wait, before we do that, uh, thank you to Mega Dragon with 19 months. It's time for our annual Wolf Bros Game Awards nominee show. Thank you. Um, Mikey, two times. Thanks for the 14 months. Tynology, thanks for 30 months. Wild that every Game of the Year nominee is a sequel or part of an ongoing series. That's a good point. That is a very good point. A Rod Dragon, thanks for the 25 months. To use the Kingdom Game of the Year. Yes, that is what I voted for. Did I screw up? I left, I closed the tab. <laughs> oh, I screwed up. What'd you do? Every, every, all my votes, all my votes didn't count. Oh no. Too bad. All right, I give up. Okay. Um All right, let's uh let's let's talk about the Steam Deck OLED. Steam Deck OLED arrives November 16th with an improved screen and longer battery life. Here, you know what? Why don't I show it off? off? No, I'll read off about it. You take a look at it cuz you haven't actually seen That's it. That's true, I have not. So, I'll okay. talk about it. I've heard the case is cool. <laughs> Instead of uh, reading the article, though, I'm just going to go to the Steam Deck page. Okay. So this is the Steam Deck OLED. Here it is. You can get it Ooh. November 16th, Wait. starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time is when it's going to go on sale. And the OLED starts at $550. This is going to be a little confusing for people. I'm making a video on this. My original Steam Deck this one. has a clear transparent shell mm -hmm. so it looks like the new limited edition yes but that's not what it is it's the older one will Just is now weighing the two i've heard like there is this weight difference but like in hand it can't really tell i honestly felt it when i picked it up really it feels well, significantly lighter yeah i guess so i mean you've had more experience with the steam deck right. than me Ooh. So this is the OLED Steam Deck. It's the same Steam Deck, but not at all. So this OLED starts at $550, so you cannot get the $400 price point in the new OLED version. Right. Uh, the way it's broken down now is there is a $400 LCD version that is 256 gigabytes, which was the previous middle tier, which is the one that I have, actually. Yes. Um. That LCD model, $400, you can still buy that. But if you go up to the $550, 512 gigabyte OLED model, which is the cheapest OLED model that you can get, mm -hmm. make sure you turn the brightness up on both of them so you can both like, compare. Uh, brightness is... Bottom right button, the big three dot button. Yeah. yeah. Press it once and then you'll see the yeah, Got slider. It. Okay. I mean, I can already definitely see the difference mm -hmm. between the two. It is like, it is night and day. So... The five hundred fifty dollars OLED uh, gets you five hundred twelve gigabytes uh, of storage. Gets you the same resolution display. However, this display—it's an OLED. It doesn't say anywhere on this page, but this screen is now ninety hertz instead of sixty. Yeah. So it is a faster refresh rate, which I think is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also slightly bigger at seven point four inches instead of seven inches. It also has a slightly smaller processor, APU. Yeah. What does A stand for in APU? Advanced. Advanced processing unit? Yeah. Right? Um, no, that's wrong. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E, so it's mm -hmm. a little quicker Wi-Fi. That doesn't really matter to me. I just plug it into the Ethernet anyway. Um, slightly bigger battery life. Some places they're claiming it's 30 to 50% bigger or more battery life, which is a wild claim yeah. because it's only 10 watt hours. It goes from 40 watt hours to 50 watt hours. Right. They're saying three to 12 hours of, of battery life, depending on the content you're playing, which is a yeah. wide margin of games. Um, 
Anyway, what else? Oh, the the power cable is slightly bigger. Yes. It has a carrying case, which we, we had before. Uh, but what they're not telling you is that the RAM is slightly faster too. Yes. And that helps pump those extra frames if you need it. Also, there's better cooling so it's a little quieter, mm-hmm. and it it'll be able it'll be able to run better. The whole thing runs better. I can already tell. Like booting this up was significantly faster than booting up the other one. Mm-hmm. I know that there could be a lot of reasons why yeah. that is, but it could also just be that it's the RAM slightly faster. Um, it there's a like on the surface, it's I'd like to say that this is just. Uh, the difference between the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch yeah. OLED, but, but there's a, a lot of little things that end up making it uh, a lot better. There's like, a lot of little changes. Like what exactly? The the better cooling, the 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 90 hertz refresh rate instead of right. 60, and the uh, faster RAM. Also, uh, it's easier to open up because uh, there you go. they did something with the screws they made them like uh like like metal threading instead. Yeah, yeah and the screen is easier to replace because you can remove it from the front you don't have to oh. remove it from the the back anyway there's also a one terabyte model which is the one that he has right in his hands okay. and that one has the anti-glare coating on the screen okay which is uh, apparently controversial i've said that a lot today <laughs> People think that the anti-glare coating takes some dynamic range out of the, the mm. colors. I mean, this I'm playing Sonic Superstars. It's a very colorful game. I'm not noticing anything. Oh, play as a uh, as Trip. Oh, I'm pl- I'm playing the uh... La- yeah. Play my save right. and uh, and just just play Trip. Um, and then try to get 50 rings and get Super Sonic. All right. And then there is another tier on top of that so there's four tiers actually and the fourth one is the limited edition which is 680 dollars. so it is what's the math there 30 dollars more yeah expensive than the most expensive one that one is going to be this really cool looking transparent shell with these red accents very yeah. similar to the one that i have uh with an aftermarket shell but this is obviously uh stock and well designed mm-hmm. so i'm gonna try to get my hands on one of these because i think this is really nice looking and then that one's gonna go uh not to you Damn. that one's gonna <laughs> go on the shelf and get burned in <laughs> can i have your old one though um sure <laughs> I, I do want to mod it eventually but okay. until i mod it you can have as much fun with it as you hooray want. for zoidberg <laughs> <laughs> um and it's got a one terabyte uh Driving there too. Sweet. <laughs> Look at you. Making out like a bandit. Um so yeah, I think the coolest one obviously is is the limited edition one. But yeah, people really don't like the anti glare coating. But I think the anti I think the matte finish looks so good on the screen. You said double jump to supersonic? No, double jump makes her do oh. the weird thing. Right. So then oh, So you I use got... the right stick to select supersonic and then you and then you hit Y, I think. Y. Or X, whatever the top button is. Alright, well I'm glowing. Press it again, maybe. Let me see. Are you do you have fifty rings? Oh you yeah, do. I got... Pre- press X or Y. There we go, it's X. Okay. Oh yeah, dragon. It now breathes dragon. fire. It breathes fire? Yeah. Let me see that. I didn't see that. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, well anyway. This game's better than you thought. Oh, also, did I say the battery life is better? Yes, the battery you did. life's better. There's a lot about this that is better than the original Steam Deck, which, like, on the surface, it's just supposed to be like a mid cycle iteration that's, like, you know, yeah. like marginally better, but it actually seems to be significantly better. I think that the Nintendo Switch going from regular to OLED had a lot of similar changes, mm-hmm. but the fact that Every Switch game has to run the exact same on all pla- on all Switches because of the nature of the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. You don't really see a lot of the differences. But since this is basically a little tiny PC, those little changes, you see them because the, you're just playing PC games. They're not like, you know, designed right. specifically. F- I mean, th- some of them are designed with the hardware in mind. But still, right. those little changes, you can tweak it to, to get the game to run better. Right. Uh. 
Shizzy says the nine hertz screen is a huge difference. It's almost selling me on it with that alone. The nine hertz screen is amazing. I don't think uh, Sonic Superstars is utilizing. No, it. it's six. It's running at sixty right now. You I can mean, still. It's you can get it to run at ninety. I just have it locked at sixty right. because it's using my save file from the previous. Uh, Got it. Steam Deck. I also have Resident Evil Four on there. Yes, and that uh, that has HDR. Ooh. This screen also has HDR, but I have to admit, uh, the difference is negligible because okay. you already have such crazy dynamic range with the OLED that like bright whites are super bright. Like you'll see if you open up my save file, there's yeah, a barrel right. you can explode and the, and it looks insane when you blow it up. Um, but HDR gives you more dynamic range in the midtones. Got but it. the deep blacks and the bright whites are still going to be the way that they are no matter what if hdr is on or not because it, oled yeah. is just so much brighter and darker uh it's awesome i i, I love it a lot uh, i'm i'm really happy with the way they've made i wish that i'm still hoping that they eventually make a smaller steam deck i did see that there's they said they're not working on the steam deck too because they're still trying to like make sure this is like the best possible version of the steam deck i don't be. believe the middle i mean i'm sure they are but they're probably not going to announce it anytime soon. Press the uh, three dot button again. Okay. Go to the brightness. Okay. It's all the way up. Okay. There should be an HDR thing there. Uh, maybe you got to turn it on in the game. Okay. All right. I, I might have turned it off uh, doing some testing. HDR only matters in HDR games. You might be able to test it by pulling up your HDR. No, no, no. Options. This is a fucking HDR game. HDR mode off. It's in game. Yeah. Turn, turn it on. All right. On. Okay. Brightness, adjust the screen brightness, display area. Yeah, do all that and then just load up the same save file okay. I have and just play a little bit. But don't save my game because I need that area. <laughs> um So yeah, I I wish I could uh say that you don't need to upgrade if you have a an original Steam Deck, but it 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 feels significant to me. I mean, $550 is a lot to ask, especially if you already have a Steam Deck yeah. um, and you're happy with it. I wonder if anybody would make upgrade kits because they that's make I, a new you know, that's screen what I already. About, yeah, because the big thing is the screen. You can replace the screen on this. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be able to replace the screen on this? Or so, replace the old one for the new screen? Yeah, so the old... Battery too. They, they have... A, I mean, a lot of this, though, is the new smaller APU. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, the old Steam Deck, you can get a 1,200p screen. Ooh, that is a bright fire. Right? Yeah. Your face lit up. <laughs> yeah. Holy hell. It's really cool. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, The old screen is thicker compared to the new one. The internals were entirely redone. Are yeah. You, yeah. Oh, you used the, you got the crossbow, you loser? Is that... What's wrong with that? Is that I, an issue? I played the whole game without using the crossbow. I didn't know that was like a pride thing. I, oh, yeah. You didn't have the crossbow in the original. Ah. I, I had forgot. I had no idea. Yeah, okay. I forgot how intense this game is. It's pretty intense. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's the Steam Deck OLED. Uh, it's awesome. Cool. I'm going to have a video out on Thursday. So what do you think about the difference? I mean, it is noticeable. Mm -hmm. The f brightness alone is noticeable. Uh, f I can doubt... Like, once you said that this was the heavier one, like, I can definitely see that now it, it doesn't feel uncomfortable to hold just mash know. it around a little bit okay <laughs> smash the screen i'm on testing durability <laughs> okay <laughs> uh yeah no the i mean the steam deck was always like the top tier uh gaming handheld to get and i think this version is the best version of it uh i do like how they're selling the old one at a discount until it's sold out so if you you know strap for cash get that um, Jesus Christ! I gotta still make a video on it. <laughs> Just take this away from me. Um, but that said, it's yeah, it's. Who is an update? If you're serious about your gaming, that's the version to get the OLED one. So I'm a little upset that there isn't. I'm oops. stuck. I'm having a bad day. <laughs> I'm a little upset that there is no $400 version for the OLED because that was such an easy thing to suggest to people. Right. To say, get the four hundred dollar one, put your own upgradable storage in it for cheaper. Um, but now it's kind of like if, if you suggest getting a Steam Deck to somebody, you have to give them more right. options now, and and it makes it less enticing. Well, you can, you know, for the time being, you can still suggest the LCD one, 
you know, if, yeah. well, if that's not important to people. Um, the refurbished program that they have, assuming that's going to still go on, I'm that's a, li- a good deal. I'm a little weary of the refurbished program because I yeah. got a refurbished one and it was a little fucked up. Right. The screen was a little shitty. Right. Uh, Griffin Nix in the chat says Steam Deck or RG Ally. Steam Deck OLED or RG Ally. I have been on the Steam Deck train because of how cheap it is. Um, mm-hmm. But now when you get to the OLED, you're getting close to RG Ally territory because I, I think they, they have them for like $100 off now. Right. I like the RG Ally because it can play more than what the Steam Deck can. But I like the Steam Deck for how cheap it is. Right. So uh steam deck 2 is also more like easier to use because it just launches in the steam and as long as the game is on steam it'll play you have to think about what types of games you want to play before you get either of them but if most of the games that you want to play are on steam the steam deck is worth it Mm -hmm. or i should say playable on steam deck yeah (sighs) okay let's somehow we have to plow through the indie world right now jeez christ okay all right. I mean, I feel like we can plow through this. Outer Wilds apparently is coming to Switch. Didn't know it wasn't on Switch already. Yeah. Is that the big deal? Is that the I big guess. time news right now? I guess. Uh, Outer Wilds is Polygon's game of the year in 2019, so I guess so. Oh, okay. Uh, also, Shantae Advanced Risky Revolution. This was what they opened the show with. Uh, this was the Shantae game that they were going to make for the Game Boy Advance, but they canceled it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so now they're finally putting it out after okay. all this time. I like that. Uh, and it's getting um, a four-player battle mode locally. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, Core Keeper, uh, beloved mining sandbox adventure is coming to the Switch. Um, On Your Tail is a narrative life sim. Uh, the developer of this is based in Italy. So we got to get this Oh, Vermont. that's cool. <laughs> what is... Wait, What? It's the the the, the audio is coming through Discord. Okay. How do I turn that off? Odd. I don't know. All right. Whatever. All right. Uh, Backpack Hero. Oh, I saw Jackson playing this today. I've I've heard of this game before. Blade Chimera. Did you see Blade Chimera? No. Oh, yes. I, I saw a very little bit of this, and I was like, "This looks cool," but I didn't see too cool. much. This game does look cool. It, it literally just looks like uh, Symphony of the Night, but like a bit more sci-fi-ish. Oh, I am into this. Yeah, th- it looks fucking awesome. That looks sick. Yeah. Okay, we found a game. All right, there we go. We found a game. We got Shantae, it. and we got Blade Chimera. Uh, Highland Song of two point five D narratives platformer set in Scotland. Uh, Howl, a turn-based tactical folklore story. Okay, uh, Moonstone Wait. Island, a deck-building life sim, uh, Death Trick, Double Blind, a non-linear detective visual novel. Uh, novel, I should say, a star named Eos. This uh, looks like a point-and-click. Yeah, uh, and everything else. Uh, Planet of Lana, Enjoy the Diner, The Gecko Gods, Passport Tout. Two, uh, Braid Anniversary, uh, Urban Myth, Dissolution Center, and Heavenly Bodies. So I, I clicked into the indie world when they were doing the the everything else. When yeah. They were doing the little montage, and uh, nothing was interesting. Right. Uh, Planet of Lana, though, uh, I played a little bit at a convention. It is limbo, but pretty. Yeah. Um, and that looks cool if you're into that. Uh, but. Braid Anniversary Edition. That's yes, a big deal, Braid right? Anniversary Edition. I'll just try to blow through the, the Verge article real quick because that was supposed to come out in 2021 and it got delayed, uh, but it is now coming out in, on April 30th next year. Okay. Anniversary Edition will launch with a bunch of updates that seem like they'll improve the core essence of the game without changing too much. There's new hand-painted graphics, according to the press release. You could swap between the old and the new graphics um, and it will have improved sound and new mixes and variants of the soundtrack. And cool. it's going to have a 15-hour development commentary featuring a lot of people, including J- uh, developer Jonathan Blow and Frank Cifaldi from the Video Game History Foundation. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it, this sounds like a really good uh, update to Braid. It's the same game, but like uh, with a fresh coat of paint, uh, a little bit more modern-looking coat of paint, and a really deep developer uh, audio commentary on it. Uh, I'm still not going to play it. I mean, if you've ever pro- played Braid... It's incredible. It is a fantastic game. It's really the game to put indie games and Xbox Live on the map. Mm-hmm. Um, I do remember that. Yeah. I remember it from indie so, game movie. 
I mean, if you if you've ever played it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't played it, I honestly think this is this is the time to do it. Like, get on it and play because it, it is very good. Of all of the games in the indie world, I'm only interested in Shantae, and I'm mostly interested in Blade Combat. Right. That looks awesome. Right. Uh, if you want to hear more about the indie world, I'm sure the Nintendo podcast this week will all be all about the indie world. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. Okay. Let's dive right into the big controversy. Oh, Let's get into some some clickbait drama. The Open Hand Foundation charity, which YouTuber uh, the Completionist has an active role in, has been accused of keeping public donations despite claiming the money is being spent on dementia research. YouTubers Carl, Carl Jost and uh, some ordinary gamers uploaded videos of their investigation into Gerard Khalil, better known as the Completionist, and his charity, the Open Hand Foundation. The pair alleged that the Open Hand Foundation, which was founded uh, by the completionist's father, Charles Collier, in memory of his wife, Karen, and in which the YouTuber and his four siblings play an active role, according to its website, currently has more than $600,000 in donations untouched in a bank account and has no evidence of paying that money forward to organizations working against dementia. This comes despite the completionist who boasts 1.63 million subscribers on YouTube running a yearly fundraising event called IndieLand uh, in which online personalities and celebrities come together to raise money directly for Open Hand Foundation. IndieLand is a celebration of indie games with a mission to raise money for this charity over a 30-hour span uh, with tons of developers, influencers, and pop culture icons dropping in for, uh, for the cause. The website reads, all proceeds earned during the event go to the Open Hand Foundation. All right, pause. Okay. I think we can take the rest of it from here. Okay. So I watched, did you watch any of the videos? So it was funny because I was actually watching a separate Carl Joss uh, video uh, on Monday. Mm -hmm. And then on Tuesday, when this went live, it showed up in my, hey, you like this, you should watch this feed. And I saw it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's oh, timing. No. So I watched that. And as soon as I was done with that, my homepage recommended the other one. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is worse than I thought. So yes, I have seen both. So I actually saw the other one first, the right. uh, the some, some ordinary, ordinary gamers. gamers. Yeah, I saw that one first. That one's forty minutes long. Yes, uh, Carl Jobs' video I liked it a lot more. It was twelve minutes, yes. and it hit the points that it needed. Yes, hit. the other one felt uh, very I mean, uh, the... gloom and doom, and like uh, and and like yes. uh, that felt like a hit piece. The I, Carl I watched... Jobs one felt like it felt like uh, I you watched know. some of uh, some Ordinary Gamers other stuff after that. Like, what else has this guy done? And like, he is a very like aggressive. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very aggressive in his storytelling style. Yeah. Like, really like getting angry at the subjects to a point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a terrible situation so mm -hmm. gerard has been doing this indie land thing where he raises money for this foundation yes and as it turns out uh the through public uh tax records yes you can see that the foundation has had all of the money sitting in a 501c uh fund which is yes. uh that is a non-profit uh just bank account that can't be touched or else you'll go to jail if you don't yeah. take that money and give it to the right people. Um, the issue here is that he has said that he has been giving it to these foundations. Yes. It, there's been, what, five indie lands or something? It's been happening for yeah. over five years, I think, or yeah. five years, or somewhere around five years. So the fact that these things have been running without him giving the money to the right people uh, is, is the issue. Open Hands Foundation has been operating since 20, uh, 2003. It was registered as a nonprofit in 2014. Yeah. So the foundation's been around a while, but yeah. the but the uh, Indie Land, the Indie Land, and right. the events that he runs ha haven't been that long. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, it's not a good look at all. No, it's 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 not a good situation. Um, that being said, I think I take a little bit of issue with the way that it's being painted and the way that it's being used for like uh, uh you know, hit, clickbait drama. Yeah, hit pieces and stuff. And we saw this with Dexerto. They they wrote an article and said that he's stealing money from right. from a uh, from a nonprofit or something yeah. or, or charity funds. He's stealing charity funds, and that is just gross hyperbole. Yeah. Um. At most, I hope this is just negligence of the money has been sitting there and just they haven't done the thing that they needed to do yet. Yeah. 
at worst, the money's not actually in the account. But that would be a massive scandal yeah. that there is no proof of. Yes. But that's kind of what has been insinuated this whole time. Yeah, because when, when you just read the headline, YouTuber uh, does nothing with you know charity money, it mm -hmm. insinuates that he's... YouTuber doesn't donate charity money to charities. Mm -hmm. What that... When you think of instantly is, oh, he's stealing yeah. this money. He's embezzling yeah. this money. Yeah. And, without, and it makes it exciting. It's yeah. like, oh, I got to see more without about going this. into it further and seeing like, it's not that he, he's literally done nothing with the money. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not giving it to the charities. He, there, there is a problem here, Yeah, he, but it's not as they, uh, the some ordinary gamers video and Carl Jobs does it too. Like they play audio from a phone call they had with yeah. Gerard. And Gerard says he found out about this in 2022. Mm -hmm. And an even bigger problem is he did a 2023 Indie Land where he said that they, all this money is going to charities and he lists all the foundations. Yeah. So mean, even after he found out, he's still telling people yeah. that this money is going to charities that have not gotten any money. Yeah. That is the major problem. Yeah. Here. Uh, Carl Jobs made a good point to to make yeah. that the point. Yeah. Some ordinary gamers seem to insinuate that this is like a a crime. Yeah. Well, um, if if you know Gerard's not careful, it could very easily become a crime. It. So I actually, uh, I don't know how much of this I should say, but I did. I talked to an accountant uh, about this. <laughs> okay. Um, and they said that uh, hey, if I was that guy's accountant. I, I wouldn't have filed that. I would yeah. have had a lot of questions ab about it. Uh, so this, he's probably due for an audit. Probably, yeah. Because of the way that Especially this stuff now, was filed. Yeah. Um, but assuming that everything's above board, like he says it is, there shouldn't be a problem if, it's, right. if he's getting audited. He just might have to pay some fines because yeah. his 501C has not donated any funds. Yeah. Uh, assuming that they're all there yeah also we keep pointing a lot of fingers at gerard it's his whole family yeah i the problem is gerard is the public face yeah of it like he's the most forward-facing person in the whole situation yeah so it, it's easy to direct you know criticism and anger towards him yeah but he's like again he's just like the public face of it he probably doesn't have as much of a hand in it as everybody else it, it's i mean if if we're going by what he says, it mm -hmm. seems like this foundation has been going on for a couple of years and uh, he just found out that the money hasn't been moved. Like he maybe he gave that responsibility to somebody else. Yeah. And just found out that they, you know, weren't doing anything with it a year ago, which is still he still did this year's yeah. Indie Land knowing all of that. Um, but yeah, it's it, now this problem's on him to figure it out. Yeah. So uh, this is why like you don't have a non-profit run by your family yeah <laughs> just uh it's a very important thing that's yes. very easy to screw up and then yeah. it's your problem you know um but yeah i think that uh the biggest thing i take issue with is the way that people are running with the story about how like this is like a criminal activity yeah when it's just uh negligence and, and laziness that could be fixed as simply as just donating the money yeah. if it's there and it seems to be there yeah. i mean it's it's in the tax filing like i don't want to say donating money is hard because it, it technically isn't i heard that it is difficult to uh donate a large sum well, i'm sure a large yeah. sum yeah but i mean he's he named a bunch of foundations he is allegedly donating to yeah how hard is it to like reach out to them and be like hey i got all this money can i give it to you yeah i mean the way he was talking about it was that they're trying to find the right people to do to give it to and yeah. it's like he's got some like choice fatigue and like i get it but like uh it's time like yeah like you you're you've been called out and it, it has to happen like yeah. now it's i'm sure he's doing that i'm sure he's gonna have a video or, or a tweet or something soon where he'll be like uh this is what happened. Yeah. I'm sorry. The money's there. See you next Indie Land. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing is that I have reason to believe that that Discord call that happened, yeah, w might have been as soon as one day before the videos went out. You think so? I think so. That's a quick turnaround time. That's a quick turnaround to be like, hey, 
why haven't you donated this money? Mm -hmm. We're going to make a video. Instead of like, you have this long to donate the money or else we're going to make a video. I mean, I don't think they would, because that is a threat. <laughs> well, in it, Gerard says, you're going to make the video anyway. Yeah. They, and then they some probably... ordinary gamers got offended. And he's like, no, you are going to make the video anyway. The video is yeah. going to go out anyway. No matter he posts, no matter how he gives well, the money I mean, or not. Like, I'm assuming Gerard like understands like if Carl Jobs is calling you about, you know, some problems with, uh, with money, mm -hmm. you know, he probably understands like, oh, I'm the subject of a video I don't want to be the subject yeah. of. So that could have been, you know, that phone call could have been at any time. So I don't necessarily think it, like he knew he there was going to be a video made about him if he's having a phone call with Carl Jobs. I have reason to believe that phone call was at, as early as one day before the video went out. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying we both know how hard it is to make YouTube videos. And one day for a video like that is a I really know. quick turnaround. I know it's also a, a lot to put on somebody. Yeah, when they have. Six hundred thousand dollars they have to spend. <laughs> uh, did he upload a video? People are saying that he, he has. A video. He has not uploaded a video, as far as I know. His socials are uh, radio silent. Yeah, that's what I. I mean, I, I have notifications on for him because I'm yeah. so interested in, in what he's gonna have to say. Um. Yeah, I don't. Again, it's uh, it's it's not a good look. It it, no. it is a charity. Uh, that uh, he's been running or him and his family have been running. Yeah. They, they, they haven't been giving the money to the proper places. But assuming that everything's the way that it seems in all of these videos that we've seen, the money is there and this could be fixed in something as simple as just giving the money. I mean, that would be step one, mm -hmm. obviously. Step two would be a substantial apology mm -hmm. um, to the charities, to the people who donated, to fans who feel let down. Um Step four would be honestly to probably disassociate himself from like the people responsible for this negligence directly. And if that means like his family, then that means his family. Yeah, there needs to be there something needs to be... in place where uh, next time yeah. it goes right to where it needs to go. Yes. And then step four would be take a take a nice little hiatus and come back refreshed and that's not gonna be easy for him he does no, a lot, he does a lot of work that's the, that's <laughs> that's the thing i don't know i think part of the problem is because i know he's overworked yeah he does too the, much the dude that works like 25 hours a day eight days a week but that's why it's easy for something like this to slip exactly yeah. i think this should be a wake-up call to stop yeah take a break recalibrate and come back like in a month or two refreshed yeah you know yes i know a month or two is a long time in youtube i mean he needs world, to address but... this immediately yes exactly and then but yes i think i think a break would be good for him yeah so uh so yeah i hope that uh it gets resolved very quickly yeah i have no ill will i think it's just negligence it's yeah. just something that slipped through yeah I it's mean, not like malice or anything yeah i think this is something that can be I don't want to say bounce back from, but I don't think, you know, this should, if he, if he does all the right stuff, this should not affect him long-term. My first question when I heard about this was like, what is the purpose of leaving it in the account? That's why I contacted an accountant. Cause yeah. I was like, what benefit could there be? Yeah. Like, and it's a 501 C that you can't touch. Yeah. So there is no benefit. Yeah. It's literally just negligence. Um, so anyway, uh that's that yeah. i hope you're happy we talked about it yeah. hooray uh what's next uh rockstar announced that they're going to show a trailer for gta 6 in december <laughs> what that's a, it what a wild that's all they what said what a wild turn they said like hey next month marks 25 25th anniversary of rockstar games thank you for all your support and whatnot we're very excited to let you know that in early december we're going to release the first trailer for grand Th the next grand theft auto that's it so there are two rock star guys and one of them left dan hauser left so we got sam, sam hauser still. Okay. okay a lot of people left. like not even like the hauser brothers like a lot of like the other people who were like big up in rockstar who helped create grand theft auto as we know it today left mm -hmm. leslie benzi is the one laszlo is another we knew that something was going on with rockstar yeah. uh 
I think last time we talked about it, uh, Take Two Interactive said they're gonna make billions of dollars next yeah. next fiscal year or something, and there's only one way that could be possible. Yeah. So we can expect a trailer soon, and probably a launch date of sometime next fiscal year. Yeah. So sometime after March and before March of the of 2025. Yeah. So there you go. We're getting a trailer. I'm assuming the trailer is going to be nothing. Like it's not going to show much at all. It's going to show people driving in cars. It's going to show people shooting. It's mm-hmm. going to show some gruff criminal being like, "Streets are tough, but I got to be tougher," and that's it. I don't know. What, show- what was the first Grand Theft Auto Five trailer? It was Michael saying, "Why did I move here?" I guess because it, you know, it's just the way my life was going. And it was like, you know, cuts to the street and cut to yeah. the mansions and cut to car chases. I'd imagine cut, that. I'd yeah. imagine the cuts to like the scenery. Yeah. I stuff. don't think we're going to see like any like major gameplay revelations. We're not going to see like new gameplay. We're going to see the world of Grand Theft Auto yes. 6, which we think is Miami. Yes. We think it's Vice City. We think so. Yeah. So we'll see that probably. Yeah. Uh, and that's in December. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting to hear about the next biggest game of all time. Yep. Allegedly, the budget is like a billion dollars for it, which... I think... I heard... 1.6 is sticking in my head for some reason. I mean, if that's the case, like, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen it uh, somewhere where, like, the standard edition of this game could cost $100. Yeah, and I believe it. I don't want to believe it. But the more I think about it, the more I feel like they could get away with it. Yep. And that would set an awful precedent. I would pay it. I would not. <laughs> I would I, I would, would pay wait until the game is on sale. And I would buy it on fucking Steam so I don't have the same issue that I had last time. Right. Actually, wait, it might not come out on PC first. Yeah. It might only be console. Oh, that would suck. <laughs> Cause I had that, you know, it came out on PS3. Yeah. And then immediately came out on PS4 and it was a different version. Yeah. And all my friends got both, so I couldn't play online because yeah. I didn't want to buy a, the whole thing again. Yeah. Anyway, a uh, new report reveals that Modern Warfare 3 development time was half that of a normal Call of Duty. I got in a little trouble. Oh? Because I made a tweet. Okay. That said, uh, 3,000 people worked on this Call of Duty, and not a single one of them said, hey, these menus are fucking garbage. <laughs> And a lot of the like replies are like either like people being like they probably said something and the top brass told them to shut up. Yeah. Which is probably true. Uh and also people saying that it was rushed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a traditional Call of Duty no. situation. Uh according to Blue Merc, Sledgehammer Games uh made them uh had to make them the uh, latest Modern Warfare in a year and a half rather than the typical three-year development cycle. The development of Modern Warfare 3 was reportedly rushed because another Call of Duty that was delayed out of 2023 release window. Previous reports revealed that Modern Warfare 3 was originally conceived as an expansion to Modern Warfare 2, but that Activision decided to make it into a full sequel. It initially was supposed to take place in Mexico, but the finished version was fully re- uh, rebooted to a story... Uh, sorry, fully rebooted the story and instead featured villain Vladimir Makarov. Sledgehammer Studio head Aaron Halton uh, took to social media to say that the game was conceived as a premium game from the beginning. I'm sure he said that uh, while held at gunpoint. So I, I played Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3, the yes. originals. Yes. The story was bad. There were moments in the story that were amazing. Yes. But the overall story... Just in one ear, out the other. I don't understand what right. anything was going on. Uh, I actually rewatched part, like the cut, the major cutscenes. Yeah. When Modern Warfare Two came out, because I wanted to see like the story, like as I played it back then, yeah. and like what changed. And I, I am so confused. So, what happened? So Modern Warfare Three, the I haven't played the camp, the campaign. Right. I have no intention on doing okay. that. Um. The Modern Warfare 3 campaign is a unique thing that has nothing to do with the old Modern Warfare games. It just so happens to have Makarov in it. Yeah. So what was... And originally it was going to be so Mexico, but did that have anything to do with Modern no, Warfare 3? All right, time out. Okay. So you know how the 
the current Modern Warfare series, mm -hmm. the ones that came out within the last five years, mm -hmm. they feature Soap and Price yeah. and like okay. the guys from the last yes. stuff. But the they are not the same Soap and Price and Ghost from the original trilogy. Okay, it's a complete it's a complete remake. Yes. So Makarov is a different Makarov from the original trilogy. And they're not doing the same things. There's a little overlap, there's like a no little, Russian they, and shit. Yeah, there's a little overlap, but it's not necessarily the same thing. Okay, is there an equivalent that I could uh, think of? What do you mean? Like another movie oh, or something. It's um, it's like... Uh, Trigun? Yeah, like Trigun. Or uh, Casino Royale, like rebooted James Bond. Okay. And, you know, they brought back M and Moneypenny and Blofeld and Q. It's... It's the same characters, but in a different setting and story from what the original characters were doing. Okay. It doesn't, it's a new version of that story. Okay. Makes sense? Makes sense. It still doesn't make sense why this one's called Modern Warfare 3 and has nothing to do with Modern Warfare 3. Well, because one, because two had like some vague connection to two because it had the no Russian. No, didn't? this one has no Russian. This one has no Russian? This one has no Russian. Uh, I fucking don't know anything then. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, where was I? Uh, Modern Warfare 3 allows players to carry forward their operators and skins from Modern Warfare 2, which in a sense makes the game the franchise's first true sequel. Unfortunately, former and current employees report, uh, reportedly were under the impression that it was an expansion at first until much later in development. As a result, the studio reportedly had to work nights and weekends to finish the game. There was also pipeline inefficiencies as Sledgehammer had to check in with, Mo with Infinity Ward, the studio who usually handles the Modern Warfare games for feedback. Additionally, they reported uh, they reportedly felt betrayed as they experienced a similar short development cycle with Call of Duty Vanguard and the company promised that it, would, that it wouldn't happen again. Furthermore, Sledgehammer pitched a follow-up to 2014's uh, Advanced Warfare, codenamed Anvil. However, it was put aside so that the studio would work on another modern warfare game that would include the popular Zombies mode, multiplayer maps, and a single-player campaign. So, uh, I've been playing the multiplayer. Yeah. And I kind of like it a lot. Yeah. But I will say, I hate a lot about this because it does feel like DLC, yeah. even though it is a completely new... $70 game. Yeah. Uh, and then I spent another $20 or maybe $10 <laughs> because I wanted a specific gun and you have to unlock it or you can just spend $10. Mm. Um, anyway, the fact that it is the same game, but $70 extra. Yeah. Is in, I think we talked about this already, how, the download for the game is really big. Yeah. Because you also need all of Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. And we talk, because it, yeah. Because it literally is a DLC. We, we, we talked about it then. This was supposed to be an expansion pack, but it wound up being a full retail yeah. game. But not only do you need Modern Warfare 2, so that's two games. Yeah. You're down, if you buy this, I don't own Modern Warfare 2, I don't think. Right. So I have Modern Warfare 3 forces you to download Modern Warfare 2. Right. It also forces you to download Warzone, <laughs> which I had deleted. Right. So listen to this bullshit. Okay. We played in a group with a bunch of people the other day. Yes. For some reason, me and Hannah cannot play together. We're not allowed to join up on a team. Okay. It force it it says no. It says you can't do it. It, it, it just it you click on the name and nothing happens. Okay. So the workaround is me and Hannah go into modern warfare 3 uh -huh. then we load warzone which closes modern warfare 3 opens warzone we join each other in warzone then we back out to modern warfare 3 again and it closes warzone and opens modern warfare 3 and now we're together and now other people can join us that is too many loops to jump through to play a video game so now they call it call of duty hq yeah and that's all of those games together yeah. Uh, I can't wait for Microsoft to see this bullshit and yeah. be like, you can't do this anymore. Yeah, it's like, I know we said before that like, you know, companies buying companies isn't exactly good, but this is this is good that could come yeah. of it. Cause you, I like, mean, I hope that no they actually way, do that. This is no way to run a business. This is no. no way to run a video game studio. It's bad enough that they have that, you know, these studios, Sledgehammer and uh, Infinity Ward and Treyarch, they're forced to make Call of Duty games until the day they die. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they have to rope in other studios like Raven and Neversoft and Vicarious Visions to, like, 
help them with that because they're so overworked that they have to get outside help to make these games. But it's bad enough that like Sledgehammer has to had to make DLC for another Call of Duty. But now halfway through, you're like, you come out and you say, no, you're going to make a full price Call of Duty game. It's going to be a full game and it has to come out on the street date or we're going to shut you down. And honestly, they're probably going to shut Sledgehammer down anyway because this game was so poorly done. So, I mean, I don't know if they would do that. I think that I mean, studio I mean, is very Microsoft important. Microsoft might, you know, be able to step in and save them. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm not sure it's... I i don't want to blame Sledgehammer. It's Activision as a whole in the way that yes. they do things. Um, I am a little worried about Microsoft because they've had a couple of L's yes. with their recent games. Are they capable of stepping in and saying, fix these things about your game? I'm hoping that these L's... You know, I'm going to sound like a shitty guru here. They're not L's for loss. They're L's for learning. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I because, like, that. like, you know, I hope, like, they do what you're supposed to do when you lose or you fail is you learn from it. Right. You know, what did Yoda say? The greatest teacher failure is? Yes, I quoted The Last Jedi. I will keep doing it. Yoda, um, Yoda was in that? Yeah. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> um... So yeah, if they learn from it and they they can you know take the lessons and apply it to you know the games going forward, Phil Spencer has made a big deal about how Redfall was a learning experience for him. So hopefully that stands true. Yeah, you know. No, I I, I hope that they've learned from a lot yeah. of the mistakes that they've made. Um, again, I'm most excited about this acquisition because of uh, I think Microsoft can do great things with Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, I think. For some reason, I I don't know why I like playing this game. Yeah. Uh, but I've been enjoying myself. Okay. Uh, but I hate a lot about it, and a lot of it is the menus and and the way that uh it interacts with the other games like Warzone and and stuff. It's yeah. a lot of weird. I don't know. This should have been DLC. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted. I brought up uh, the uh, Sledgehammer made a tweet that was in the article. Mm -hmm. Uh. We're in Clever Pet of Modern Warfare 3, both the full game experience, blah, blah, blah. It got community noted. <laughs> More than a dozen Call of Duty devs said that Modern Warfare 3 was originally developed on as an expansion to Modern Warfare 2 and not a premium standalone title. What, did they try to dispute it? I think they're dancing well, around it. Yeah, that, that's the thing. They're dancing around it. Yeah. Because they can't come out and say, I, you know, this was supposed to be DLC, but notable idiot Bobby Kodak came down from his ivory tower and said, no, I need money. So who... Yeah, Sledgehammer shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Th this, this, I would have had more, I, I mean, I don't know, because they're still, they're still being run by the same idiots that they've yeah. been run by. So they might have been forced to make a statement like this. Yeah. Um, listen, I hate a lot about what Elon has done with Twitter. Yeah. It's been all bad. Yes. Except for community notes. Yes. They're the best thing that's happened. <laughs> All right. Plowing through the rest because we're running out of time here. Yes. Okay. So, real quick, apparently the, rights holders for James Bond were done with video games until IO Interactive came in and said, hey, can we make a James Bond game? And they said yes. Oh, I forgot this was happening. Yes. On the latest issue of Ed Edge Magazine, IO Interactive co-owners uh, Hakan Abrak and Christian Elverdam broke down their vision for the James Bond series. While a new James Bond video game seems like a no-brainer, it took some convincing to get the green light as the current rights holders didn't want just another action-oriented shooter for Bond. Our impression was clearly that at the time they were not looking for a game, says IO Interactive CEO and co-owner uh, Hakan Abrak in the Edge interview. And I think it's fair, it's fair that they might not have been super happy with some of the later games. Those later games include all the games made by Activision. <laughs> it's crazy to think about that. Like, yeah. like it's not like they have much going on with the with the Bond license. They got the movies, the movies, and the movie. Uh, Dan the Daniel Craig series just ended, but the last James Bond video game was 2013. It was uh, yeah. Legends, and that game was shit. Well, they had a lot of bad ones, but they also had a lot of incredible ones. And, yeah, and they had one insane one that yeah. like did so much for the franchise yeah. and uh it's crazy for them to just be like forget it yeah and you know well, what honestly there's probably been a lot of internal controversy about the license and going between different devs and stuff and they're probably like forget it we don't want anything to do with it i think it has more to do with the fact that the games have been bad yeah like they're they're you know in modern parlance there's been three eras of james bond there's been golden eye you know the the peak era 
There was the EA years, which, you know, say what you will, EA put out some really good James Bond games. They had some bad ones, but they, they had, had some, some bad really ones, good but ones. They also had some really good ones. Yeah. And then there was the Activision years, and they had one decent one, which is the remake of Goldeneye, and then a bunch of Call of Duty clones that ranged in, eh, this is a right to god awful. Yeah. I've heard people say they like Bloodstone, but Bloodstone looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think IO Interactive. If they make it like a Hitman game, that's amazing. Yeah, it's that like the perfect yeah. studio to make James Bond. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sony confirms delay of half. What? Is Sony it half confirms it's... it's delayed half of its 12 planned live service games. That's that's not good. Uh, yeah, Sony Interactive Entertainment has halved the number of live service games it plans to release over the next few years. Uh, previously said it planned 12 live service games to hit market by March of 2026, up from three during its last business uh last business year this march however earlier this year playstation management team confirmed that it had uh partnered with destiny studio bungie for a rigorous rigorous portfolio review process according to the press reports this seems to have led to some scale back um so yeah i think this has to do with uh jim ryan who was like really bullish about like promoting live service games for sony that's why they bought bungie in the first place um he is leaving so I don't think they're going to carry forward his initiative of going through with all these live service games. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'll also note that the PlayStation portal comes out any minute now. Yes. Uh, it comes out actually tomorrow, but uh, I don't know when people are going to start getting their hands on it. Uh, and I, I, I think IGN gave it like a decent review. Did they? And the verge shit all over it. Yeah. IGN, I think gave it an eight out of 10. I've been, I didn't see IGN's review. I've been seeing, I saw Kotaku's review. I saw Polygon's. I saw the verge. I've saw like every review I've seen of it says like, this is cool, but you could use your phone. Yeah. I'm a little annoyed because I still don't know. Even if mine shipped, right. I bought one and they're sending me a review copy. So that review copy I'm not going to get it until right. I think the end of the week. Okay. So that's after, first of all, all of these reviews have come out. Yeah. And also, I'm getting mine first. Yeah. I'm sick of these companies <laughs> sending out review copies after I can just go to the store and buy it. Because then I have to say, I got this as a review copy. Yeah. I have to like do some guideline bullshit. Meanwhile, I can just go buy it myself. I mean, can you say that you bought that like you bought this but sony is also sending you a review copy yeah i could say that yeah. but they want me to say hashtag ad yeah and it's like it's not an ad i fucking bought yeah. one <laughs> also having hashtag ad just because you sent me a playstation portal makes am i that cheap yeah you think you could buy me for the price of a playstation yeah because like i don't see hashtag ag and ad in this ign article wow they did give it an eight yeah it's fucked up because they had to have gotten a review unit. I mean, <sighs> why do they have? Why? Why do I have to put hashtag ad? That's the thing, though. YouTubers like have to declare ads, even I though know. like movies and TV shows don't have to do that. For Is there a placement. video on the IGN YouTube channel? Bet they didn't fucking put hashtag ad on uh, that. There's a. I think that might be the official trailer. Um. Some there's people a, there's think, a hands-on. Some people think that getting free product uh, sways people into giving a positive review, and and I it does. I, I do understand that. Yeah, but not me, baby. I need more money if you're gonna make me say something that positive about something. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm stuck on this eight eight out of ten thing for the PlayStation Portal. I mean, I guess. Look, it, it's supposed to do one thing. Yeah, and it better do that one thing well. And if it does that one thing well enough, then yeah, I can understand an 8 out of 10. But in the grand context of things, if it's just going to do one thing, $200 is a lot to ask for. When you can get a phone for $200 that does the same thing and also you can browse Be a the internet. Phone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I agree. I, I was talking to somebody about it today, actually. And uh, I was saying, like, look, people are who are interested in it, are going to know if it's for them before they buy it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to buy it. So it's going to be a weird thing to review. I mean, no, it's not. Because I'm going to review it against just a phone with a backbone controller. Yeah. Because it's the same thing. And I've been using the phone with a backbone controller. Yeah. And you know what? There's 
it's shitty sometimes. <laughs> But it's not the fault of the phone or the backbone controller. Yeah. It's their shitty online service. And is the portal going to make it that much better? Yeah. I highly doubt it because there's no tech in the portal that's different than the tech that's in the phone. Right. They're both Wi-Fi 6E, I believe. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that it is better. But yeah. also, that would be kind of shitty, too, because it means that Sony is locking their service behind some proprietary device well they're they're already locking a lot of this but you know with proprietary tech you can't use bluetooth headphones you have to get their playstation link headphones to use yeah. so that's another big strike against it a phone you can use bluetooth headphones yeah uh yeah i don't know i i'm uh, again i i need to be really wowed by this thing yeah anyway last thing overwatch league shuts down uh Yes, earlier this year, Activision Blizzard expressed doubt that the long-term future uh, over the long-term future of the Overwatch League and said its efforts to maintain city-based pro esports league may prove unsuccessful. That turned out to be the case, as Activision confirmed today that the Overwatch League uh, is now finished. Uh, announced in 2016, Overwatch League was a groundbreaking idea modeled after conventional pro sports leagues, city-based teams that would compete in seasonal home and away matches, eventually leading to, into a playoff series and world championship. But high startup costs, the initial base franchise fees were $20 million, contributed to a slow Jesus. start. And just a couple of years after it went live, um, the league was battered by COVID-19, which uh, squashed the, its live spectacle ambitions. What twenty million dollars to start an esports league? That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, I mean, um, that yeah. makes it makes sense. Um, yeah, Overwatch League was huge, but Overwatch is not as huge as it was. They yeah. they made a second one, and nobody likes nobody it, likes so. it. Uh, situation also took a turn for the worse in 2021, following accusations of widespread discrimination and sexual misconduct at Activision Blizzard. Um, which led to multiple sponsors ending their support for the league. The loss of partnership in China, a situation that still hasn't been rectified, only added to the woes. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, yeah. these esports uh, leagues uh, just they're just weird money pits. You know? Yeah, it's like that's has that bubble really burst yet? Because like they just keep funneling money into it and. Like aside from this, like nothing really like explodes or collapses. I don't know. I uh, I think that there are certain esports that do make a shit ton of money, but I think there are other ones that people just shovel money into because they think, hey, esports, that's yeah. a thing to shovel money in. That's a thing that that's a good investment. Uh, and then they don't really get a lot of views or anything. Yeah. So I I I don't know. I think that certain ones are doing fine, but uh, I'm not surprised that Overwatch mm -hmm. League is is over. Is all I'm saying. Um, okay, how about this? Fruit of the week, fruit of the week, fruit of the week. This is by Hard Drive. It says Jeff Keighley announces best layoffs category for Game of the Year. <laughs> I did year. see that. And this article that they link here mm -hmm. is four years old. Wow. <laughs> oh. This is a joke that is four years old. And it's as relevant as ever. Yeah. You thought this was going to be a fun tweet of the week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, we're going to talk to you yes. as quickly as possible. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Wolf Den Podcast. Podcast. We got John Kerbaugh who says, will you enjoy Chris, Pr Chris Pratt as Link? Did you watch the Garfield trailer? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> that is weird. This is that is a weird trailer to watch. It filled me with rage. <laughs> I'm not one to get mad over Garfield. I don't have the energy to do that. But like, it just felt wrong. I was fine until like the music kicked in and then it turned into like a generic animated trailer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then I was filled with rage. Yeah. And Chris Pratt is just Chris Pratt. He's not Garfield at all. There, there was parts where he like he spoke slowly and flat, and I'm like, okay, like you kind of got it. Then he like he gets like really like emotional and overexcited, and I'm like that's not Garfield. No, he's lazy. Yeah, he'd be happy to get cheese on his lasagna, but he would not like be overly excited about it. Mm -hmm. 
Ooms of Doom says, on the topic of Bob not being in Spider-Man 2, what video games would benefit from the inclusion of Bob NPCs? Chat? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, where, where should I be involved? Where should you just show up? Where should I show up and just be an asshole? <laughs> the Sims? The flower in Mario Wonder? Okay. There you go. All right. Pizza Tower. Okay. Hipster Sim 2024. All right, I resent that. Parker838 <laughs> says, Bob's point about professors and teachers not wanting to adapt to a new medium or technology, and then they complain is spot on. I had a teacher in high school that was very old school, and it was almost impossible to convince him in to convince him a new way of doing something can be helpful. I'm sure everybody knows somebody in that uh, yeah. boat. I heard an interesting thing uh, about how um, kids these days, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I think I've brought this up before, uh, kids these days who didn't grow up with the same sort of technology yeah. are having issues, you know, troubleshooting minor things in a similar way that boomers have had issues with it. What do you mean? Like, like if there's something, like they can't use uh, computers and stuff to the same level in a similar way that boomers do, you know, All like, right. like because I think it's because the way we came up with computers, we know a lot more of the ins and outs just by the nature of how things have changed over the years. We were like learning it as the technology was advancing and yeah, and changing we, and we know how things work at like a smaller at like a base right. a more base level well, because we kind of had to because yeah. like there was nobody like to really teach us how to do it properly yeah and like i guess nowadays like everything just works the same and yeah. it should, it's just expected to work for example i know some people who don't have computers like right. i know people who are our age who don't have computers yeah. or that like wouldn't know how to open in uh, uh an ex in exe file on right. a on a, yeah. on a on a computer yeah yeah and i think that there's a lot of uh younger people who are in a similar boat because they don't need any of that stuff right um and i don't know that might not necessarily be a problem maybe they don't need that going forward there's a lot that they don't need but i yeah. you know there are, and there's definitely going to be some things that they will need to know you know Somebody will eventually, but yeah. you know, there's going to be nerds who will be yeah. able to figure that out. I think that that's an interesting conversation when you involve AI because a lot of AI is uh, you tell it to do something and it does it. Yeah. So, like, for example, uh, when we have a problem with our computer, we will go to Google and type in the problem and we know how to read Google and mm -hmm. implement the solution. Yes. Our parents don't know how to do that. Correct. And a lot of Zoomers don't know how to right. do that. But eventually, Zoomers will be able to go to Google. Why don't... Uh, what's what's my Facebook password? Yeah. And then it might just spit back a way to figure it out. Yeah. And it might just do it for them. So that's going to be... the they're, They'll have their own solutions that are different than the way yeah. that we're thinking about it now. Anyway. Ayo, it's Nigel Gaming says Derek Connolly is said to write the live action Zelda movie. If you're f unfamiliar, didn't we talk about him with his we did, disasters? Yeah. He's listed as the writer for such greats as Rise of Skywalker and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. We may be in store for quite an abomination. We can only hope Miyamoto is more involved than, than not. I'm going to defend his Rise of Skywalker credit. Because he was the writer during the Colin Trevorrow era of Rise of Skywalker, not the J.J. Abrams mm. era of Rise of Skywalker. And that's his script for Rise of Skywalker, when that leaked, it wasn't called Rise of Skywalker, it was called Duel of the Fates. Ooh, that's and cool. That version, that's cool. <laughs> that version it has been unanimously said to have been better than the final product. I could see that. So... I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt with that one. Um, the Jurassic World uh, movies got worse over the time. So, yeah, I'm not going to defend him there. He doesn't have a lot of credit. He did Safety Not Guaranteed, which is also a Colin Trevorrow movie. 
Uh, yeah, that, that wasn't bad. Kong Skull Island was very good. I don't want to, yeah, take too much away from him. I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like there's not a lot of experience with a lot of the people who are uh, being uh, talked about with this movie. I, yeah. I feel like there is potential for it to be uh, a good movie. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a, a shitty movie. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think like you know just because he doesn't have like you know one out of the ballpark hit Mm -hmm. you know that doesn't necessarily mean the movie is going to be bad right i think avi arad being involved makes it mean that the movie could very well be bad hair and wire says hope nintendo isn't replacing amiibos with nfts what the fuck though maybe that's what the second screen is for displaying your (laughs) nf tendo okay i could see that oh my god please no that'd be sick if you sp- then you spend my- you spend your platinum coins that you earn yeah on little nfts that always display on a second <laughs> screen that's sick patent that all right now we're in chat very briefly all right yeah late. give us some good questions anyone give us money for questions psycho delirious says loving the free feet content i gotta remember to put on shoes before we do this <laughs> uh jay palmer thanks for the two months and that's it okay can I play Game Pass on Steam Deck? Yes, it is a huge pain in the ass, though. Yeah, that was another thing that Valve was saying. They're working on um, uh, dual booting. So you can boot into Windows proper, but like that's low on their totem pole. It was No, it was low on their totem pole because they're trying to get the OLED out the door. So they've been working on that since the Steam Deck came out. Yeah. Uh, and I have not put Windows on a Steam Deck because I am waiting for the dual booting to get figured out. Yeah. Because... Uh, Right now, I think you need to. It's not. It's not. Good. You can't it's... dual boot. You just. Ha... It's just the one thing. I think you can like. Do it on an SD card. It's it's yeah. a it's a huge pain. Yes, I'm I'm not willing to to sacrifice my Steam Deck for it. Um. Polo Joseph's thoughts on this PC gamer tweet, and it says five hundred five games parent company lays off thirty percent of its workforce. Says gamers really only want sequels, so that's what it's going to make. Uh, and then the picture is uh, Norman Reedus holding a baby. Hmm. I did hear about that. I didn't know. Like I heard 505 uh, parent company was laying off people because, of course, they are. Uh, Amazon also laid off like 100 and something people from their gaming division mm-hmm. recently. We can't cover every layoff because like it's, that's just most of the news. I think they, they want happen to so frequently. Comment on the fact that they only want seek that. People yeah, I was, I was getting to that because I didn't hear about that. I mean. <sighs> That's that's the eternal problem. We you know we we can sit here and like say forever, you know, support original games, support original ideas, make original games and ideas. But if all we're buying are the sequels and yeah. the remakes, then all they're gonna make are sequels and remakes. It's just more exciting, you know. Like like the reason the the picture here is Death Stranding. Yeah, and the reason why Death Stranding is exciting is because Ko, uh, Kojima made. A million Metal Gear games. Yes. That were very popular. Yeah. Uh, so this isn't a sequel. It's an original idea, but it, we're only excited about it because this guy is so seasoned in, in a completely right. different game uh, mm-hmm. IP. So it's just hard for a new IP to gain as much popularity. But at the same token, a lot of original IP is not given the chance because they have to go, you know, do a sequel or a remake to something. You know, yeah, that's... but but it, it, they're not giving a chance because the num because of the numbers because because it's a safer bet to make a two. Right. No, I know that, but how do we, you know, how do we fix that? Yeah, no, you know, we they, should we they, should they, fix that. If they don't put out as many sequels and they do foster more original ideas, then that would you know curb the appetite for sequels. This is a capitalism issue. It is a capitalism <laughs> because, issue, yeah. Because uh, these companies need to be more comfortable making uh, bigger risks. Yeah. Uh, because that's what's more most exciting to the industry is when they come up with something unique and cool. Mm-hmm. And AAA game studios have sort of lost that. Yeah. Bob, what's your opinion on Bandai Namco announces new dev studio for commission projects? Okay. Uh commission project oh is this the um i i did hear that they opened up 
two studios. Okay. Uh, yeah, Studio Two and Studio S. These are the studios that are going to be working on, uh, like basically games for Nintendo. Is that the commissioned games that you're talking about? Yes. So here's here's what I here's my hot take. I got a uh, hot take. Studio Two mm-hmm. is going to be Nintendo games, uh-huh. just like how they worked on like you know Smash Bros. Right. Yeah. Studio S, small. Studio small. Okay. <laughs> smaller games okay almost mobile games little portable games second second handheld nintendo's making a second handheld the press release says uh bandai namco studio uh studio 2 and studio s has been an in-house studio specializing in commission development projects uh, super smash brothers ultimate mario kart 8 deluxe mario kart tour we have cooperated in development of many world standard titles. I think the name of the studio is Studio 2 and Studio S. Oh, it's not two studios? I think it's one studio that is named Studio 2 Studio S. Okay. That's bizarre. I might be wrong, but I'm never wrong. Oh, no, no, no. It says, uh, has announced Studio 2 slash Studio S, a development studio. Yeah. There's got to be at least two teams in the studio. Yes. That would make sense. They Studio both... S, small. Studio small. And you know what? Mario Kart Tour. So mm. that's small. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? So based on what Forkawa said and other rumors going around, do you think there will be a Switch 2 coming out next year? Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. Next fiscal year, probably. Yeah. 2024 fiscal year. Mm-hmm. So after, like, March. Yeah. Um... Anything else? I think we're I think we're done. Oh wait, we got some notifications like from Mike Havart. Thank you for the three months. Oh, just realized I can do this again. Thank you. And Jay Palmer, thanks for the two months. I think I said that already. All right, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every audio podcast service, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, audible apparently but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms we're rating wood he is doing the uh game awards thing right now okay uh so go uh watch him do it he's on games for impact should we bully him into voting for one of them oh we didn't guys, do a game yeah. for impact game you know what I, I if it was another category i would yes. bully him into one but uh we can't we can't do this cat we skipped to this category. Yeah. Uh I will see you guys on Thursday for the Nintendo podcast and also a video and also I'm gonna stream. It's a busy day on Thursday. Okay. Uh thank you guys for hanging out and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.